This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnke and I'm sitting here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Hello. 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 I'll tell you what, I'm not just sitting here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins this week. We're also sitting here with our buddies from Kosamui, part of the, well, the whole part of the Little Dum Dum Club. Hello to Tommy Daslow and Carl Chandler. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. I know, don't take this as a slight, but as soon as you started talking, Tommy turned you down in his head. <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> that does happen a lot. Also at live gigs as well. Right. I do a, a sound check and the sound person's like, yep, you're all good. You're all good to go. And I get out there and I'm like, hello! <laughs> what the fuck? Also, we're not your buddies from Koh Samui. We're your buddies from Melbourne and comedy. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't meet us in Koh Samui. Yeah. Oh, did we I? haven't even You haven't even been to Koh Samui yet. <laughs> I know. I could die before we, we get there. Are we somehow recording this after Koh Samui? Is, <laughs> yeah. Did I miss something? Yeah, guys, how good was Koh Samui? Fuck. Did you guys go a week early without yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, t- t- we got the wrong flights. Yeah, and we're back. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. It was How'd relaxing. the shows go, guys? Yeah, yeah great. We had great. a wonderful time. We, we still did them on the beach. People were running past. You should, at- Dave. You should probably explain what Kosamui means. Yes, in case uh, people don't know what you're talking uh, about. There there is the a translation. Oh, Welcome to Thai. <laughs> There, we are going very soon, or, or I guess when this comes out, we're still going in the future, uh, to the Coast Samui International Podcast Festival that we've been doing for a couple of years as a little dum-dum club. This year we've invited you fine feathered fellows along. <laughs> uh, so there's no – it's a bit of a shame because the whole joke was – uh, the Coast Samui International Podcast Festival featuring Little Dum Dum Club and no other podcast. <laughs> but this year, that is no longer funny yeah. because there is another podcast. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame. We like you guys enough to just bin the joke. Yeah. So that's how wow. much you mean to us. Yeah. yeah. To lose a joke. And we've only got two. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're deeply on it. Yep. The other one is Nick Kappa smells. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, Dill, Dill isn't fat anymore, so we yeah. lost that one. We are, we are shedding material so quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if Kappa has a wash, we are dead in the water. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's exciting. Are you guys pumped up? Yeah, it feels a bit surreal. Like It doesn't feel like we're, it's actually happening yet. But yeah. You guys aren't pulling out, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, no, the, no, 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 no. <laughs> i got to tell you, the week we an, you an, uh, announced it and we announced that we were going along as well, it was the week that those two fire festival documentaries had just dropped. Yes. <laughs> there were so many comments being like, yeah. is this legit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we do get a lot of that. It is so bizarre that we are more organised than yeah. the fire festival. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was in charge of booking the flights for you guys, so there's every chance you're not actually going. <laughs> yeah. Just messaging you all constantly going, please. Check the details again and just let me know if there's any why. issues. You've been emailed at least two or three times. <laughs> yeah. Go and double check it. I'm like, oh, do yeah. I have to actually do what? Should I look at it? Yeah, probably. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> well, you wrote back saying all is good. Yeah. Well, I assume all After is good. A, a reasonable oh amount God. of time. So we assumed that you had gone and checked. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Fire festivals looking good. <laughs> yeah. You're talking to a man who, booking himself a flight back from Sydney recently, got to the airport, couldn't check in for my flight because I'd booked it for the month later. So <laughs> anything's possible. Yeah, okay. Good. Please check it. I'll have a, I'll have a look. <laughs> how, how was spending a month at the airport? Yeah, pretty good. It was like that Tom Hanks movie. <laughs> you got to get your money for <laughs> Big. <laughs> <laughs> Just dancing on the tiles of the airport going, why isn't it playing music? <laughs> Trying to put in the cheat code to get myself on an earlier flight. All right. So the festival is next week, but there's still time, I guess, if you want to come along. There actually is. Like I was just saying off off air, um, there are people that listen to us that are still getting their tickets. They're still going, fuck it. There's someone that had a breakup and decided to come. Someone got... Someone walked in and quit their job like a couple of days ago. Oh, went, yeah. Fuck it. I'm going to Koh Samui. Yes. What a great way to, to quit your job. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, there's someone who posts on our page a bit who uh, had a profile. Her profile picture was her and her boyfriend. <laughs> And then she posted that her and the boyfriend had broke up and the two steps were new profile picture without the boyfriend and then messaging us going, I'm coming to go see <laughs> yeah, yeah. in that order. Yeah, new fro- profile pic with a lot more cleavage than the original <laughs> thing as well. Which is like, that is a, that's a big breakup move. <laughs> Under new management. <laughs> and the, so the cost the cost's the same if you book late? As a, there's no early bird discount, right? If you book today... 
Um, <laughs> what? It's a week out. Of course, there's no early. Is there a, discount. But is there a discount code they can use <laughs> for for what flights but, or a con? But the point, because I, I, don't I am not. I don't know if you're confused. I am not Qantas. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Just because I booked your flights for you, I'm not a travel agent. <laughs> yeah. thought... We're not your mum and dad. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what a weird what? way to find out. <laughs> Why are you telling me on air? <laughs> <laughs> but the, but basically, the accommodation they get a discount if they use a code, and yes. that discount. Is enough to pay for a good chunk of a flight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, that discount is still there. If you go to the page, uh, it's podcast 19. Mm. If you go to the Ozo or the Amari websites for, like, direct, don't go through hotels combined or whatever it is. It won't work there. If you go through the, the directly through the, the hotel's website, it will still work. Yeah. And we'll put a link to your website that explains everything in the description of this yeah, episode. Yeah. If someone it's little gun on club that. slash Kosamui. Yeah. Yeah. I love any, the idea of anyone listening to this who doesn't know us uh, and just going, so far all these guys have done is plug something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I don't fully understand, yeah, yeah. and I don't care about it, and I, and I don't trust. Yeah, but there might be someone who goes, "Fuck it, yeah. <laughs> I'm going." Have right. you been fired? Yeah. Come on down. Is I your mean, boyfriend I mean, a dropkick? Yeah. Come to Kosamui. They're like, oh. Fuck, but it doesn't sound like Matt's going. So maybe we can get his a con. <laughs> yeah. or... But it, that's a good point. If anyone is thinking about breaking up with their partner. This could be the reason to do it, right? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, right. Just if you if you're push. on the edge, I reckon just do it. Just do it. If We've there's had... doubt, you probably know the. What answer. if what if you're a coward and you want to break up with someone, but so then you book the flight, you come to Koh Samui, you then fuck one of the guests on the podcast. Okay. And that's, their, that's the way of breaking up. And then, right. Or another yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just anybody else there. But I just thought that would be a high profile way sure, of doing yes. it. Sure, yeah. That would get back who, to Who them. are some of the guests for people who don't know? Who, who could they fuck? <laughs> <laughs> In order of uh, least fuckable to most fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> that's brutal. That is going to spoil my chances with some of the guests. <laughs> no, who is coming? Uh, Stephen K. Amos is coming. Uh, Nick Cody's coming, Dirk Jaya Singer, Nick Kappa. Oh, smelly. Um, yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, who else? Oliver Clark, uh, Brett Blake. Yep. Is that all? I think that's yeah, all. That's, that's all. Nick Carr. Nick, Nick Carr's Carr. coming yep. as well. Yep. yep. And, uh, of course, you three. Yeah. So. Uh, we'll be there. Yep. DTF. <laughs> Great. Great. Does he know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> Down to fly. <laughs> Tommy confirmed it was Down me. to yeah. fly. We're good to go. <laughs> right. good to go. I love that. Turning up to the gate to get on your flight, <laughs> handing over the ticket and going, G'day, I am a DTF. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to join the Mile High Club in which I'm going to fly in a plane a mile <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> can, you tell, can you tell me when we're a mile in the air? <laughs> I'll be in the toilet. Meet me in there and tell me. <laughs> or the clubhouse, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh, well, let's let's stop having fun and do your podcast. Okay. Yeah, let's well, do that. If people have never heard the show before, basically what usually happens is Matt, Jess, and I are taking turns to report on a topic often suggested by a listener. Mm-hmm. But uh, this week we have delegated all of the heavy lifting and all of the hard Fuck. work to you, Mister Carl Chandler. Fuck! What a dream! <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. But, well, you know what the the topic that you offered me to start with was. Liverpool Football Club because you knew that I was I was into them and I and I thought you know what I don't think you guys might be that interested in that so I thought well maybe I won't do that maybe your listeners won't be that interested in that that particular subject but fuck I'm, we're now recording it on the day that Liverpool has won the Champions League <laughs> final, and what a fucking obvious choice it would have been, and a much easier topic. But fucking hell, you're just getting emotional in the middle of the report, like yeah. breaking down. Like oh, it was so good today. Yeah, yeah. I, I could have just come straight from the pub. I, I have had a big day, um, but I, I've sobered up. I ate the plate of spaghetti, and as uh, all the experts say, that sucks all the alcohol out of you. Mm-hmm. So um, I think I'm okay. Is it because? They lost the they lost the big English tournament. Yes, but one that don't get too much big. I'm just wondering, is this yes. better? Would you say if you had the choice? Look, between good question. The- the, what what happened is we came runner up in the league, which is the the normal season. Now, what this happened today was the Champions League, which is effectively the old way of pitting all the champions of all the different clubs against each other. So it's like the champions of England and then the champions of Europe. So if, officially, it's a more uh, prestigious title, but we, as Liverpool, most people would prefer to have won the normal season, right. right? Even though this is technically a better 
trophy. Yeah. Yes. It's the, the, the kings of kings rather than the kings, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But, so um, you're saying it would have been preferable to not be getting drunk at 9 a.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. It, we, I wish I had have done that a couple of Sundays ago <laughs> rather than today. Okay. You'd be over yeah. the hangover bunny. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. Um, so anyway, there's all the details on the subject I didn't. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, I've definitely learned a lot. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Uh, so what? So now I, I, I ask a question. That's right. We usually start with a question just to get us on to the topic yep. that you actually chose. Yes. Well, there's a few other topics I didn't choose as well. Do you want me to run through all of them? Yeah. <laughs> what else are you right. passionate about? How long about? does this go for? <laughs> <laughs> all right, question. Here's the question. Um, this musician was named the greatest singer of all time by music website Consequence of Sound due to his six-octave range. What? Oh, six. Six. That's do you know music, right. Jess? Do you know much oh, about that? Oh, a little bit. Like right. Freddie Mercury had a four octave range. Right. Really? And, right. So, and, he's, and he's known as, as, you know, being a technically great yes. rock singer, isn't he? Mm. Yes. yes. So Would it be fair to say huge. that there's eight octaves? Y- I think there's yes. ten. Uh, oh. Is yeah, that, that the fuck? Right. But, Wait, what does oct mean? Uh, that's oh, that's oh, very good point. It's very fair. Well, it's eight No, you know music. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Wait, is how many octaves well, six, are there? But there's ten octaves. Oh, you know what? I'm only basing that off when I read this particular uh, okay. bit that, that they named someone who had ten in the world, like mm. some absolute Pavarotti, friend. right? Yeah. But, but Anastasia, the- yeah. But no, in- no. <laughs> I'm but in theory, there it's infinite because yeah. it's just what people and oh. octaves are notes. So if, if you think of like the. Uh, opening, this is such a lame thing to know. The opening uh, word of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, that's somewhere? Yep. That's an octave. That's just when you one. Go somewhere, that's an octave. Oh, right. From the, oh, okay. Just in that so word. So it's a range. Yeah. So it would be like middle C to higher C, slightly C- higher C. C6? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. I don't, but, but that, anyway. So, like, Matt, I, right. listening to you, I reckon you've got a one octave <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> voice, I think. Yes. There's not a lot of range there. <laughs> no, you can get shrill, can't you, when you're, when you're oh, angry? Yeah, definitely. Was can. that it then? Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Absolutely furious. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and uh, so should I reveal? Should I reveal the, the answer yet? I reckon no. knowing, <laughs> knowing who you love, is it Mike Patton? It is Mike Patton. Oh. You well picked. Well, for bonus points... Who did he replace? Uh, so I, this is greatest singer of all time in within popular music. I think I, I believe that's by that the website. Range. Yes. Yeah. Who did he replace? Uh, who had five and a half octaves? Ooh. Oh. And this is this is this will surprise you. <laughs> I don't I don't mean to sound like the, the banner of a news.com.au article. The answer but will like, shock you. Happy to partake in this. You do know you're not hosting a quiz show, don't you? <laughs> and again, I'm about to give you some information on the person I didn't research. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, okay. So who's got big range? Wh- Whitney Houston. Oh, oh yeah, good, good good oh. good guess, but incorrect. Wow. Dolly Parton. Um, I love Dolly Parton. No, I don't know why you would have guessed that. But. I think I, I'm guessing it's in my head it's because she covered Whitney Houston covered. Oh, anyway, right, it doesn't matter. Right, 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 right. My, I didn't realise that's why I said it yes. until you yeah. looked at me like I was okay. a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I panicked. I guess. <laughs> I thought you were just getting horny. <laughs> yeah. So so what? Who's in between this guy? Who's in between Mike Patton and Freddie Mercury? Yeah, I yeah. guess someone who can yeah. go low and high because that's I guess that's Mike Patton thing. He can. Well, I guess let's. I won't go too long on this because I don't think you'll be able to pick it. Because I mean, like you said, just Freddie Mercury. That's someone yeah. that you would think, right? He can go high and low. Patton, if you listen to his work, you you could guess that he goes high and low. This person, I wouldn't have thought so much. So at five point five octaves is Axl Rose. <laughs> wow! Really? So really? before they announced that that Patton was a, the greatest singer of all time with the, with all the, the the range, the biggest range was Axl Rose. <laughs> <laughs> he only ever goes high. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I can't that's think a, of it. That's great. Yeah, he that's... must be spewing that he never pushed himself to go that extra point five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also giving himself a stage name of an anagram of oral sex. He probably regrets <laughs> that as well. I hope he regrets that. as well. <laughs> I didn't know that. You didn't Did know. you not know that one? No, that's, that's uh, a wait, great right. fact. Wait, early. wait till I tell you about Pearl Jam. About what their name means. Or. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, 10cc. So- <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's yes. on a cum stuff. Yeah. What is it with rock and roll and cum? Yeah, I think it's just teenage boys. Yeah. I think that's what it is. 
Um, Dave? I, okay. <laughs> You're I'm a resident for my, teenage boy. Waiting yeah. for my balls to drop for my octave range yeah. to come in. I'm trying to think of what Dave Warnock is an anagram of. Um, oh, there's a there's a big one in there. Is there? Oh yeah, so there would be too yeah. with the so W A R. What? And I mean W A. Yeah, there's W A and K. Yeah. So that gives us a good starting point, <laughs> right. and then we just got to sift through the rubble. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Try and work out what words we can make with that. Fuck. Can we get on that by the end of the episode, please? Yeah. Can someone get an anagram simulator? Something like E de Wanker, something like that. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Look, I've got to present a report. Can one of you get onto an anagram website and find out? Yeah. Are there such things? Match yes, of really? course there is. Yeah, they give you dozens and dozens of... Um, <laughs> of wank-related Yes. <laughs> There's always wank. If it doesn't come up with wank, I'm going to be like, get a different oh, website. Yes. This yeah. is bullshit. Has it ever taken this long to start the report? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yes. <laughs> oh, right, okay, that's yeah. good. That's a relief. Well, it's something yeah. we've been working on ourselves. Um, the last few weeks have really nailed it. But, yeah, um, <laughs> yep. We're All back right. on to taking We're, a while, but that's you, okay. We usually start with a lot of anagram-based material. <laughs> oh, perfect. Hey, Karen Weaved? Is one. Karen! <laughs> Karen Weaved. Karen's my go-to comedy name for a lady. Really? Karen. It's a good one. Oh, no. Reaver wanked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Weaver, uh, what? Reaver. Reaver Reeve, wanked. Reeve wanked. Reeve Vader Weaken? I could really? Yeah. Vader Weaken? But are you taking the word wank into consideration? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, enough. I think this is a real nerd website. Where yeah. they, surely that would be the first I thing I think you've got Jesus. Safe Search on on this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anagram website. <laughs> you've got Net Nanny on your <laughs> anagram machine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll get back to that. So Great. Please. So, please. I put a lot of time into this. Let's do this report. <laughs> so, you are you are a big fan of Mike Patton. I am. Yes. Now, you well, you asked me. I, I guess uh, it makes it a bit easier if you pick something that you already know. Yeah, that you're into. You're passionate about. So yes. halfway through, you don't go. Why am I fucking talking about yes. this? Yes. Right. 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 Um, okay. So, right. I'll start from the start. Mike Patton. So, I, and I know uh, Matt. You're a bit of a fan as well. Yes. Yes. I've seen. Um, half his bands probably. I've seen Tom Hawk, Faith No More. Uh, oh, spoilers. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, they were no things good. I was going to bring up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you do the fucking report. <laughs> yeah. So smart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we'll start. Mike Patton. So, for people unfamiliar with him, uh, he was born and he grew up in the Californian, small California town of Eureka. In 1968, uh, which is in the United States of America, and he <laughs> wait. So you're saying California's in the United in a, States? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's not a big fact, do we? <laughs> the level of detail here is pretty. Incredible. I know, and, but man, I know it's on Wikipedia, but I've got multiple sources that confirm that California is in the United States. It's not just one of those bullshit you, things. You click every source. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I heard because I listened to your episode last week, and and in it. We heard that you got fired from a TV job because you only used Wikipedia. Now, that's source. not true. <laughs> that's absolutely not true. Now, Ironically enough, citation needed on yes, that one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> on, on a show a couple of weeks ago, we had Tom Gleeson on, and I did bring up the fact that I was not invited back uh, to work at Hard Quiz. Now, and then he got, he got very stroppy about it all. And uh, he started making up stuff. And I don't think he – I really don't know what he thought about all that stuff. I thought this would be funny to bring up. I, first of all, I don't think he had any idea I wasn't even working on the show anymore. <laughs> but then he started making up stuff why I was fired. I wasn't fired and these were not true things. <laughs> he goes, you didn't you, – you, you only used Wikipedia as a source. I didn't. You Gleeson wouldn't even fucking know what happens in that building, let alone what I was doing. I knew when you brought this up, Matt, that it'd be 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Defending. That's like, don't yes. start it. Yeah. All right. Let's do the report on hard quiz. Right. I'll do that instead. Okay. Born in Eureka. Yes. yes We've right. established it. In, right. in 1968. <laughs> yeah. In the United States. Confirmed that. Uh, Patton, he's, Patton started singing when he was hanging out with his friend, uh, watching his friend's band rehearse, and their singer didn't turn up to rehearsal. So then Patton filled in as a bit of a joke, and the next week the band fired their regular singer. Oh. Great. What a cunt. Imagine what, not, yeah. Not, yeah. not turning up and the guy that's hanging out just has a six-octave range. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> so, I'm so glad Axel didn't turn up today. Now we've got a 0. 0.5 yeah, better singer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or oral, as he was known back then. Yeah. <laughs> before, yeah. before he found a funny anagram of that. Yeah. I love that, that the start of you just doing a joke, like just... Stepping into sing as a joke yeah. ends yeah. with you in a permanent position in, in the band. Yeah, and ending 30 years later with someone saying, you are the greatest singer of all time. <laughs> really thing. tricked him this time, <laughs> didn't yeah. I? It's a great bit. Uh, now, 
He soon uh, he got the, the singing bug, I guess. He formed a band with his high school friends uh, called Mr. Bungle. Um, great name for a high school band yeah, as well. Yeah, good stuff. Just a bunch of fucking idiot boys. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let's point out the fact that my high school band was called Weed Hornet. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Wow. <laughs> we pl- uh, practiced in a garage that had a whippersnipper in it called the Weed Hornet. Oh, okay. Oh, and right. everyone thought we were massive stoners. Oh, right. Yeah. Of course. Fine, yeah. Of course. So uh, he formed a band called Mr. Bungle with his friends and entered in uh, the high school talent show. But he- fuck, what, what fucking idiot. So they've got a band called Mr. Bungle, but... As a joke, they then entered in the high school uh, talent show and renamed themselves Bister Mungle. Oh, so they yeah. fucked with the name of their band that no one even knew the name to start with. Right. They did a, they did a fucking Weird Al parody <laughs> of their name before they even had a band properly. And a name that comes pre-fucked with as well. Yeah. That's just right. classic Axl Rose, another anagram, another <laughs> great anagram. Uh, now, I, I can't find any information about where they came in the talent show, which tells me that they didn't win it. And you can watch the clip on YouTube, which also tells you they didn't win it because it is fucking terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. It's just high school, ter- just turds playing. <laughs> There's like in the video, they've got their friends just skateboarding across the stage uh, and then playing uh, instruments on their back and on their head and just <laughs> the worst of... The worst of teenage toxic masculinity <laughs> there is. Yeah, it's just it's so bad. I like and this. You bullying school children from the seventies. Oh man, from the eighties. From the eighties. Um, yeah. What else is there in that clip? It's so bad. There's they're, they're doing a lot of jump cutting between styles. There's a sample. They all of a sudden they start playing a sample of Macho Man, which which then prompts five of their friends to storm the stage dressed as the village people. Right. And this actually sounds great. Yeah, it sounds yeah. really fun. Then they cut into a death metal version of Hey Hey We're the Monkeys. Fuck, just the worst. You would. Oh. Anyway, I love this guy. <laughs> at, at a talent show at my high school once, a guy got up there and he ate a sandwich. Great. <laughs> and that was his entry. Great. Oh, that's how, sick. How'd he go? Hey, how'd I, think, go? I think he placed. Really? <laughs> Two one. Someone who ate just like a foot long. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, he's going to be better at eating. The, at least he knows he's going to nail that. Yeah. It's not like juggling where you go, well, there's a chance I might drop all the balls yeah. and fuck it, and then I'm definitely not going to win. Imagine there's no fu- chance imagine of Imagine you. you do fuck it. <laughs> yeah. 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 On it or something yeah. yeah. Put it yeah. up your ass by accident. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, damn it. Not that again. Is, that is actually funny if you did come out to eat a sandwich and then you get halfway through and went, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I ate right before I came out. Yeah. You don't know what I was thinking. I filled up on bread. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is this clip, is this the thing that you saw that first got you no, into my pattern? <laughs> no, no, um, So Mr. Bungle was named after an uh, after-school special taped in the 1950s about using your manners during lunch, uh, starring a, a puppet called Mr. Bungle. Um, <laughs> Whoa. So, yeah. It's, well, it's a similar story to the Weed Hornet, obviously. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Bungle was a teenage death metal band who incorporated uh, ska jazz, hardcore punk. Uh, they recorded a few demo tapes called, uh, and again, just just teenage boys, aren't they great? The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny, <laughs> Bowl of Chiley, and God Damn It, I Love America. So uh, Faith No More, the, so the band Faith No More, they existed at this point but without Mike Patton. Right. Um, they were a very moderately successful uh, funk metal band. They toured in Patton's hometown of Eureka. They played in a pizza parlour to four people. <laughs> moderately successful. Yes, to four people, two of which were Patton and his friend. Um, <laughs> and as a joke, he got up. <laughs> <laughs> the other singer's like, fuck. <laughs> so he handed the band his uh, Mr. Bungle demo, and in one of the absolute miracles of mod music, a band actually listened to someone's shitty demo that they handed. <laughs> so uh, so uh, how did he know? It? Was he just there by accident? Pat, no, he was a fan of the band. Right. He went to watch them. Right, right. He wasn't just eating a caprichosa and like, <laughs> accidentally saw them. So, right, he, so he already knew about them and was like going to check them out. Yes, yeah. right, yeah, right. yeah. He was a, he was a listener. At right. Faith and More, they're a five-piece. At I that think? point, it's five on stage, four in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You'd almost call that a yes. <laughs> maybe call that one off. I reckon. I think so too. <laughs> I think as soon as you get booked in a pizza parlor, you call <laughs> yeah. that yeah. one off. I think. Oh, I, your... I did a gig at a chicken shop last year that went. Uh, did you? It was pretty awful, actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. So your rule is there has to be more people in the audience than on stage. I think that's a good rule of thumb. That's... For, for stand up, that's a very good rule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Faith and More then ran into trouble with their singer, Chuck Mosley, uh, and their guitarist, Jim Martin, remembered the demo about a year later, and, and the, the 
the six octave singer uh, yeah. singer in it. It's a hell of a memory. Yeah. And <laughs> you don't forget a six octave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and because you remember the very deep, deep voiced, uh, deep throated metal singer Whoa. and went, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what a night. We're getting back to that Axl Rose again. <laughs> <laughs> and and said, Oh, let's get that giant fat guy from Mr. Bungle. But he, Mike Patton wasn't a giant fat guy, but because of the voice, he thought that, that's just a, some giant old fat guy, but it was actually like an 18-year-old kid. <laughs> right. How did he met him? Didn't he hand the demo to him? I don't. I, it might not have been him. Might yeah, have been yeah. Him. Oh, okay. I, think yeah. He, I think he handed it to the drummer rather than the guitarist. Oh, right, I was so. going to say his memory was just getting handed it in a pizza parlour. He's like, must have been a big fat guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 get yeah. A That's it. <laughs> right. Uh, so they, uh, he got the gig. He uh, apparently uh, now I look. I'm very loath to bring this up because it, it wasn't. Um, uh, this is only off Wikipedia. There's not, there's not multiple sources of this. Mm. But they also auditioned oh, Chris classic, Cornell. Classic, classic. Some of his classic work. <laughs> He's at it again. Hard. Quick Don't style. fire me from this podcast. <laughs> 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 so who did you say they auditioned? Chris Cornell from from uh, Soundgarden. Soundgarden. Yeah. Um, but, but obviously, he wouldn't have been in Soundgarden yet. But still, no. Pretty, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And hopefully true. <laughs> well, yeah. well, an earlier singer of Faith No More was Courtney Love as well. Really? Yeah, that's true. So huh. not for very long. Right. But yeah. Um, real real rotating door in at Faith No More in the a- early days. Absolutely. Absolutely. They had they well so by this point, so we're going into their success years now. So once Patton uh joined the band, uh they were nearly finished uh writing an album. Um they just needed a singer to put on top to write the lyrics. They had all the music written, all of that sort of stuff. He did it in about two weeks. They put it out and it, and it went, you know, crazy. But that band had been around for nearly 10 years. Really? At that point. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So they were, I think the rest of the, the, rest of the band was significantly older than Patton because I think he was 18 or 19 at that point. Mm-hmm. So then they recorded an album called The Real Thing. Uh, he, like I said, he took two weeks to write the lyrics, um, which I guess explains some of the lyrics on the, the, the song Epic. Like, it's it. What is it? It's it. What is it? See, there's a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> that made me think yeah. a lot as a kid. Right. I'm like, whoa. Who, who yeah. are you thinking? What it? is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's, here's the answer. It's it. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> just had to wait around a little longer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, you had it paused while you were just mulling <laughs> it over. <laughs> All right, give me 45 minutes and then I'll jump into the back minute of the song. Uh, so the band released that song, Epic, as a single in the US in mid-1989. didn't really do much, but then they released it in the UK and it blew up in the UK. It blew up in Australia. It was more of a hit here and in England than it was in America. So then they re-released it in America and it blew up there. Huh. Got uh, heavy rotation on MTV. It's it, in it. <laughs> 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 Very nice. Um, and then there was, a, if you remember, if you've ever seen the film clip for uh, Epic where they have it finishes on the, the, the dying gold, fish, the dying fish. So apparently, that was that fish belonged to another singer <laughs> who then became very popular Kirk Cobain. No, <laughs> Bjork. Oh, that was, Bu- that was Bjork's Bjork, fish. Bjork's Icelandic fish. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That's so Did weird. Did she know they killed her fish for the film clip? No, I think the story. This isn't in my report. I just remember this fact from a while ago. I think the I think Roddy Bottom, the key, keyboardist, had been to a party of hers the night before or something, and just stole a fish and brought it along and Great. killed it for the film clip. Yeah, <laughs> for art. Yeah, and, and sorry. <laughs> We have a fascination with great names on this podcast. Yes. Uh, can you you're just repeat? Very fair. You're very fair to ask this. Yeah. Who, who, who's that member? His Small name is Roddy Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he is a... I mean, you're all thinking about it, right? He, yes. And, yes. and what's more, he is a gay keyboardist. It is not a stage name. That is his actual name. <laughs> wow. Roddy yes. Bottom. Yes. A Brilliant. real name. Amazing. <laughs> He sounds like the sort of person who'd be subscribing to our Patreon. <laughs> yeah. But it makes a lot of sense. Like, why would you change your name to that? Like, that makes more sense that his real yeah, name right. is that. And he, he's kind of the main guy. He's kind of the band leader, right, for Faith No Yeah, More. him and Bill Gould, uh, who is the, the uh, bass player, they're sort of the, the guys that have been there since the start. They're the ones that are driving it sort of thing. Right. Yeah. I, I reckon they tell – I'm sure I've heard them tell the story that the fish didn't die, but it definitely died, didn't it? Well, as if they had – what, what were they going to do? Pick it back Scoop up? Scoop it back up, put, a, put yeah. it in a Send it back and... to Bjork. Yeah, yeah. Back to yeah. Iceland. It's not yeah. like teaching a dog to play dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Right. Goldfish uh, just don't have that range. Right. Yeah. They don't have a six octave life range. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so that so it went to number one in in Australia, went to number one in England. Uh, it led to two years of constant touring around the world for Faith No More, uh, which took its toll on the sanity of the band members. Rookie Patton went from a wide-eyed innocent to becoming bitter with stardom, the music he was playing, he was playing over and over, and he's got over basic hygiene as well. Um, <laughs> the next quote will explain that last one. This is from a metal magazine for about a year or two into his stardom. Quote, when I was staying in a hotel room once, I took a shit, rolled it into a ball, and then put it into a hot hair dryer so that the next guest oh. to dry their hair would oh get hot shit in their face. Oh I like how you call that bad hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> Do you call it good hygiene? <laughs> I reckon I would have just gone a little further. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to give it all away. I wanted a little bit of a review. <laughs> That's great. So you're turning the hairdryer on and getting sprayed with shit and going, this seems like the work of someone who doesn't use deodorant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is just bad training. hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we can confirm they definitely kill that fish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's their kind of behaviour. They don't give yeah. a fuck about a fish. Yeah. That's gross. Either that was a massive escalation in a year from going, <laughs> put the goldfish back in the bowl to <laughs> c- cop this in the face. <laughs> well, you know, as he's seen when he plays jokes, they work out pretty well for him. So yeah. he's thinking the, the old shit in the hairdryer prank. Yeah. He's like, I'm probably going to get the Nobel Peace Prize off yeah. the back of this. I think the, the worst thing for me wasn't putting it in the hairdryer. It was rolling it into yes. a ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never heard of that before. Right. Why do you need to touch it? And Don't make touch it? it. Yeah. Just stuff it in. Just wedge it in there. Yeah, that is a, that is a weird point. Just your hands covered in sh- your own shit going, boy, I'm really going to prank someone <laughs> yeah, good yeah, with yeah. this. <laughs> you never get to see the payoff. Right, yeah. right. You never get that. Yeah. I've never understood the appeal of that kind of prank. It's it's just so unsatisfying. Yeah. Sitting there What's wondering. The point? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Wondering if someone sprayed themselves with your shit. Yeah, you're right. This was a silly idea. (laughs) Would it? And would it work the way he thinks it's going to work? Like come flying out? Did did he think it was going to come flying out as a ball as well? (laughs) Also onto their face. Most people looking down the barrel of the hairdryer to see if it's working. (laughs) Like Elmer Fudd with his shotgun. Here we go. Here we go. (laughs) Is this thing loaded? Probably more likely someone's going to notice the smell of human shit in their bathroom. <laughs> yeah. You know, where's this coming from? Well, they, you know, perfect room for it because you just think, well, it's the toilet. Yeah. They never think of the hairdryer. <laughs> no one ever crime. thinks to flush the hairdryer. <laughs> if, if you did do the prank these days, you'd just be on TripAdvisor every day for the next month just refreshing one-star reviews. Yes. <laughs> People write, yes, yes. got them. <laughs> I you, turned on the hairdryer and I got sprayed with shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A ball of shit. <laughs> and you're just too keen, like you're ringing the guy at the hotel going, let's go out tonight. And you know what? Wash your hair before you come out, I reckon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hang on. You booked our accommodation in Koh Samui. (laughs) (laughs) Should we be avoiding a certain (laughs) hairdryer? Do you 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 use a hairdryer? hairdryer? Yeah. How wet does your hair get? I mean, it would never dry in Thailand. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. This was very humid. The perfect place for this prank. Yeah. Yeah. One of the benefits of going bald. I'm never going to fall victim to the old shit in the hairdryer prank. (laughs) I'm going to bring my own. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to do a shit in the safe in my room. (laughs) To prank you, the rest of us have to somehow try and directly shit into your toothpaste. (laughs) Roll it into a tube. (laughs) Stop it. I can just picture people listening to this, just fast forwarding 15 <laughs> seconds. Ah, oh, they're still going on about this shit in their head. Like, Whatever happened to the six octave range? <laughs> it sounded off so well. It was yeah. so promising. It was so technical. Now it's like, what can we shit into in a hotel? <laughs> All right, so Patton coined this. Shit terrorism. That's what he. That's what he called. It what is he bad would do. terrorism. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's it pretty is. lame terrorism. You're right. It's 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 like when people blow themselves up and it doesn't affect anyone else at all. It's like that, that sort shit of, terrorism. You know, shit did in the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Shit. Uh, so it didn't stop there. Uh, now I, I don't know what got into Patton's head, but he went from basically coming out of he he, he didn't want to join Faith and More to start with because he had a degree he wanted to finish in Eureka. His hometown, but he went straight from being a bit of a nerd to then hitting this rock and roll lifestyle and went fucking insane. Because then, a year into being at into Faith No More and then blowing up, he played a show at the Brixton Academy in London. Uh, during the show, Patton filled his shoe with his own urine, 
and then downed it in one gulp. Wow. That was in that was in 1990, so that no wonder the shoey didn't really <laughs> kick off for another yeah. couple of decades. Yeah. I think they put it back by, by a fair while. I, now, I like the drinking out of a shoe thing. It's a shame <laughs> It's a shame the liquid he's gone with, but yeah. maybe we could refine this and yeah. make it something that everyone can enjoy. It took 25 years for him to think, beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put beer in the yeah, shoe. Yeah. And because he, he's, he's 21 at this point, right? 20 or 21 20, or something. Right, right. Drinking yeah. his own piss. Drinking yeah. his own That's piss. That's rock and roll, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> P- piss terrorism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to prank someone by having them accidentally put my shit onto them. Yeah. And now I'm going to celebrate by drinking my own piss. <laughs> <laughs> that causes, that's, yeah, that's cause for celebration. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a walking Ren and Stimpy cartoon. I think he's, he, what if he's so crazy he's thinking, you know what, I'm going to make myself prank proof. No one could ever trick me into drinking piss. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ultimate power move. Oh, oh. man. He also, like, oh, God. He, uh, there's also clips you can find of him on stage in, I think, Chile. It's in South America somewhere. And he's just screaming at people to spit at him. And he's just wa- he got his mouth wide open and people oh. just spitting from the audience trying to oh, sp- spit into his mouth. I hate this He's line. insane. <laughs> That's somehow worse than rolling a ball of shit. Yeah. Uh. Uh, so at least it's your own shit. I mean, oh, we'll, no, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's, there's a scale to this yes. somewhere. Yeah, we'll get into the we'll music at out. some point. Yeah. Yeah. Not your own way. shit for the person drying their hair, though. Yeah, yeah that's right. I sort of want my own shit in my hair. Sorry, but I yeah. don't. <laughs> sorry for a controversial diva. You're a diva. <laughs> I am a real diva. I don't want my own shit <laughs> flying into my hair. But you know what? There's a there's a way out of that. You just don't put it in your own hair dryer. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's it's fuck. It would be a great prank for someone to find your shit, roll it into a ball and put it into your own hair dryer. That is yeah, a great that's prank. That's next level, that's yeah. a real high. So when you that's complain, great. you go, what? It was your own shit. What's yeah. the problem? Yeah. So you've picked up a hair dryer. <laughs> yeah. First thing you notice, very top heavy, very yeah, front yeah. heavy. It yeah. yes. also smells like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I won't investigate. Yeah. Yeah. My hair's real wet. I yeah. need to dry it. I'm about to go out. Yep. So you're spraying shit in your hair. That's yeah. the only way. You've got to step through a lot of barriers. Yeah. But whoever looks, I, I don't know what looking into the barrel of a hairdryer would look like. Like it seems like it'd be pretty dark in there. You wouldn't yeah. You wouldn't realise it unless it was absolutely chockers with shit. <laughs> I don't think you would notice. This is what we need to find out. I right. reckon it right, would right. smell. I reckon because they usually keep them like the hairdryer will be in a drawer in the bathroom. Yep. And you, you'd open that drawer and you'd smell shit. We also, well, the barrel's not that deep either, no. is it? It's it's because it's got that great thing on it. Yeah. Guys, well, guys at home, welcome to Myth- Mythbusters. <laughs> <by the way>. <laughs> 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 We're going to do it in the studio and find oh. out. <laughs> Man, let's do, do it in Samui live no. on stage. <laughs> yeah. No one really knows either what a human shit Looks like <laughs> yeah, no one's ever it. looked. <laughs> no one's ever looked down after getting off the toilet. You're the right, great man. History. I mean, the, I would, I it's would. like the, it's like a yeti. <laughs> Shit is like a yeti. No one's ever I've, not I've, taken a real yeah, picture. I've There's a few to... cloudy, blurry pictures of shit over the years. <laughs> Every time I try to photograph my own shit, I get the negatives back. But it's all blurry. Yeah. Oh, that's just a, that's just a man in a suit. <laughs> A man in a very smelly suit. That's all that is. <laughs> Why are they trying to wedge that man up into a hairdryer? I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck the rest of Mike Patton. Let's just yeah. let's just get this story hey. straight. I'm having a good time. Who's up for a shoe of piss? <laughs> Do a shoey of a solid shit. <laughs> Can you do a shoey of food? Has anyone done that? Oh. It's always, it's always... Knife and fork out the shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> A ravioli shoey. <laughs> yeah. David, go for a baked bean shoey. Oh, in Samui, we could do a curry let's, shoey. Yeah. Let's yeah. do a pad thai shoey on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> a thongy, because it's going to yeah. be so yeah. warm. I'm not wearing yeah. shoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That just means it's more hygienic when we drink or eat out of it. Yeah. Just yeah. noodles sliding down the surface <laughs> of a Haviana <laughs> in the open mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'd love a curry out of a shoe. That'd be good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do You'd it. You'd love a curry out of a shoe. Well, I'd love a curry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. Is what and I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, and these shoes are really pissing me off. I just want to get them off. That's all. Oh, God. <sighs> <sighs> all right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, this guy's only 20 in the story. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. taken us this long. These are the hot. This is this is the best years. This yeah. is like saying, oh, we're only up to 1968 in the Beatles. Fuck, <laughs> this, is, this is taking forever. There's not that much more. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so uh, in the meantime, uh, Patton used his clout and his fame from Faith No More. That was such a big hit uh, to get a record contract for his uh, original band, Mr. Bungle, or as you guys might know him, know them, Mr. Mungle mm-hmm. from uh, the talent yes. show. Yes, yeah. love their now that school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this, this self-titled album, you would know this, Matt, the, Mr. Yeah. Bungle's first album. It's a very teenage boy album. Yeah, very circusy. Yes, it's all... Uh, like very funk funk metal. Uh, it's a lot of um, uh, like trumpets and horns and um, a song about porn. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's a, a, as I've got here. It's a cult favorite for sexually repressed teenage boys everywhere. <laughs> with its jump cut style of meshing metal, jazz, and funk themes of masturbation, suicide, clowns, and porn. Uh, they were made to <laughs> they were made to change the name of their lead single, Travolta. <laughs> Due to legal action from an unnamed celebrity, <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise. Yeah. 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 Fucking out, Travolta. <laughs> uh, so, Faith No More's first album with Pat and the Real Thing was a big hit around the world. After two years of touring, they were itching to record some new music. Their next album, Angel Dust, was a radical departure from the poppy funk they'd been known for. With even Patton's pin boy, a uh, pinup boy image corrupted with him cutting his hair and, and instead growing a particularly shitty goatee. Uh, the music was heavier. I'm sorry, did he blow dry his goatee? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, the music he's, was. He's back at that same hotel years <laughs> later and no one's touched the oh, hair. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, my uh, face is a little wet. Just dry that off. Oh, no. <laughs> dry his face. To, to be fair... Yeah, you would deserve that for dry, dry blowing. Fuck, what, what do you call it? <laughs> blow, uh, dry. blow drying, blow drying a goatee. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. Oh god. Um, dry so- blowing is what they called their hair drying in high school. <laughs> 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 Very good. Uh, so the music on, on Angel Dust was meaner, heavier, <clears throat> less accessible. When the record company heard the finished product, one executive told the band. Well, I hope none of you have bought a house. <laughs> All of them had bought a house, so the, the the album did not kick off in America. It wasn't very it wasn't very successful at all. Uh, it was they did continue to fa- grow their fan base in other countries like England and Australia. Uh, they actually got bigger there. In hindsight, that album is now like one of them. Was I think it was named by someone the most influential uh, rock or metal album of all time on on I think Metal Hammer or something like that. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's so uh, we sort of know of it in this country because we it was a major hit. Uh, the cover of the Commodores song "Easy," so you know, "Easy" like Sunday morning. Mm. That was they hit number one here. Um, of which, you know, if you haven't heard that, you can get on YouTube and watch them mime their way through a version of it on YouTube uh, on the best show that has ever come out of Australia. Hey, hey, it's Saturday. Mm. Oh yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, Patton didn't use any of his shit terrorism to do any blackface, but yeah. <laughs> For context. <laughs> The Fa Hey at Saturday is probably most famous for being the last place on Australian TV to do blackface. Yes, they did a couple of years As ago. As of this recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. They, We're yeah. probably due for another one pretty soon. For, you, for, um, over, for overseas listeners, we had, did have a bizarre show called Hey at Saturday that was great many years ago if you were into that sort of stuff and then came back and really did not change with the times. They had a talent show segment and they had someone on doing blackface and they thought, this is fine. Yeah. Harry Connick Jr. went, that is absolutely not fine. He was judging the talent show yes. part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. He was just a guest on it. You've made it sound like he was a regular Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> I kind of just say they did change with the times because they aired it on a Wednesday night. Yes. Mm. Yeah. They, they <laughs> didn't so change with it. the times. They changed the times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And still called it hate. But this was, yes. this was like 10 years ago, right, or maybe 15? The blackface thing. Yeah. yeah, the blackface thing's about 10 years ago. It was yeah. this, coming up on This yeah. century. Yes. yes. Yeah. That'll probably surprise some American listeners, yeah. I reckon. Yes. Very it true. was way too recent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. It was, um... And there was debate about, is this okay? Oh, if you watch the clips, you know, it's Daryl on stage, like Harry Connick Jr. saying on the show, that is not cool, and him going, what's the problem? Oh, sorry if I'm sorry if you're offended by this or you, you've been confused or whatever, and it's like, Daryl. Daryl, Daryl, yeah. Daryl. It kicked off a week of national debate in the newspapers and yeah. stuff, like people going... The Yanks just don't get our sense of humour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's them that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I you... think it probably dra- dragged us forward 
pretty quickly just that it happening. If yeah. there was a positive to come out of it, I guess. That's true. True, yeah. I think it's better that that happened 10 years ago rather than now because I think if you did it now, you'd get way too many idiots online going, what's wrong with it? Yeah. Like I think back then everyone just went, okay, yeah, that's bad. But now you've got voices of other idiots online that just go, <laughs> well, oh, no, well, you can't do anything these days. Free yeah. speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Free face paint. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, let, let's let's fast forward a little bit. So uh, while still relatively successful, Faith No More continued to get sort of less commercial success the more albums they put out, especially in the United States, uh, where and his interest continued to waver in the band until he quit uh, after a couple more albums, of which, uh, you know, there are some great albums, I think, of theirs. Uh, I reckon that, well, every album was very different, right, yes. as well. But they were all awesome. But didn't they sort of shed members a little bit? They had uh, the guitar, Jim. Yeah, Jim Martin. They got rid of Jim Martin after Angel Dust. They then got a new guitarist for King for a Day, which they, was the Bungle guy, I think. Trey Spruance played guitar on it, but then he didn't tour. With oh them right, over 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 money and stuff like that. So then they got a fill in uh, to do the live shows, and then they he was part of the band, and then they kicked him out before they recorded the next album. <laughs> it just it seemed like there was a very short period of, of a settled lineup, yes. which was a, what two albums. Yes. And either yes. side of that, it was just rotating. Exactly. House. You're exactly right. Yeah. The real thing in Angel Dust was the two uh, 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 same lineups. But before that and after that has been, you know, um, a lot of change. Jim Martin, uh, the guitarist that they sacked after Angel Dust because everyone hated him, oh, he right. then went on to become a very successful pumpkin farmer. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah. If people know the videos, they'll they'll remember. He's the one with the crazy beard and yes. flowing sort of black frizzy exactly. hair. He's the one who looks like he, he's the only one who looks like he should be in a metal band. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But now pumpkin farmer. Yes. Love that. Yeah. What a weird. Yeah. Right turn. <laughs> There's a bit of a isn't the the guy in uh, the other guy in Nirvana, who's not Dave Grohl. Christ. Christ. Yeah. Christ. He's that, a he's a farmer or something, isn't he? Maybe. I don't one know. of the guys, guys from, from Blur. Blur, the yeah. cheese farmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. huh. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange. Hmm. Um, right, so they disbanded, Faith No More disbanded in 1998 after all that. Uh, Patton recorded a couple of other albums with his uh, now maturing band, Mr Bungle, or a bit less about porn and... <laughs> Funk and things like that. Now more about settling down. And <laughs> yes, having some kids. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and th- this and farming pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to teach my kid to ride a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear a song about someone teaching their <laughs> kid how to ride a bike. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> pedal, pedal. <laughs> uh, so this this became the 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 phase where he then started being in every band and every album and ev- working with everyone. So he <laughs> he he's he gets all over the joint now. He he made a new super super group called Phantomus. Uh he was just doing heaps of different stuff and of course when you push yourself and you do heaps of different stuff you're going to make missteps. I think he's misstep. He made a hip hop album called General Patton versus the Executioners which <laughs> Was better than it sounds, but not much. Okay. <laughs> it's him. So he's rapping. Yeah, he's rap. There's even there's a really bad. I, know, I don't want to accentuate the, the worst bits because there's plenty of stuff that I've just glossed over that I think is really good. I'm a fan, mm. but there's a song, basically recorded about the same time as like you know really we we all got the you know the internet was a lot more common, mm. uh, and there's a song called LOL. Called Loser Online, and it's just all about click your mouse and hit return and all this sort of stuff. It's like, oh, this will age well. Yeah, if you made a parody of someone trying to write about the internet 15 years ago, you would write this. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Very bad. Um, also, and an, sorry, uh, a notable point in his history is when he toured Australia with one of the uh, one of these bands. Um, he asked my friends, the Avalanches, to mm-hmm. come and remix a song. Uh, in another one of his projects called Peeping Tom, he went. I didn't know anything about this at the time, and I, I, I am friends with him. I went to one of his. <laughs> I want to make that clear. I want to make that clear. That's low for me. Um, <laughs> he. They turned up at a show I was at. It may have even been the, sh- the one. You know, you may have been there, Matt. Um, uh, Peeping Tom at no, the forum. No, oh, it no. wasn't Peeping Tom because Pe- Peeping Tom wasn't created yet. Okay. So this was like I think it. Uh, it was at Phantomus. At the old palace, yes, on the geek tour. It, I think they played twice. It might, 
might be that one or it's the other. I think it was the other one. I don't think it was the Geek Tour when they played with Melvins yeah, as well. Yeah. I think it was the other time. So they were so you there? Clo- I was so close. Yeah, I was so close. Were I was you at there? that one. I was well. at the other one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was at the yeah the Geek Tour. I was on the one. edge of my seat. There. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was electric. <laughs> 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 you could have you could have been near this anecdote, but oh. you weren't. You weren't. I could have been inside a do go on report. So. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. whoa! So they played, and my and they the avalanches were there. I was like, "Why are you guys here? You, I know you don't like this guy's music." And they're like, "Oh, he, wait, this- you were talking to them? Yeah. How come? Oh, I'm friends with. Them. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. you don't like this music because I know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. personally. So." Uh, they were there and they said, oh, Patton just took us out to dinner to try and convince us to play on this album. I was like, fuck, what? <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, we don't care, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, whatever, oh, we'll come. Yeah, we'll have dinner with him or whatever. And I remember they made it clear, he didn't shout us. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't pay for dinner. And I was like, fuck, you you got to do it. You got to, you, you know, and they're like, oh, do you want to meet him or something? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> And they go, okay, all right, sweet. Well, we know him. It's no big deal. We'll just, we just get you back. So you, whatever. they are to him what you are to them. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We know him. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah, friends, yeah. Yeah, we're friends yeah. with my partner. <laughs> <laughs> no, they care way less about it. <laughs> right. They're not bringing it up still. Um, so then he, they go, okay, we'll just bring you backstage or whatever. And so then we went back. As soon as the band finished, I went backstage with them. And they, because he was, he was really keen on getting them to work with him. So I walked in with them and Patton was just like, Ah, boys, and just hugged me. Thought I was like one of the avalanches that hugged wow. me. Didn't have any shirt on. Had literally just walked off stage. Was all sweaty. Just hugged <laughs> I me. Thought you meant you didn't have a shirt. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hugged it's me. Too nervous. I took it off. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hot in here? It feels hot in here. <laughs> uh, hugged me and was like, "Oh man," whatever. And I was just like, "This is fucking weird." And then because I acted weird, he then looked back and then looked around and went. This guy's not in the van. I just hugged a fucking weirdo guy <laughs> and like really regretted it after that. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you just go from like a hundred down to zero yes, in that moment? Totally, oh. totally. Because then I started asking about his music, and he was like, oh, "This guy's just a fucking fan." <laughs> yeah, I hate fans. I'm gonna yeah. shit in his face. <laughs> <laughs> if only there was a middleman I could use. <laughs> and they never ended up, ended up doing the remix, did they? No. Yeah. And, and it crushed me because I was like, do it and then let me come over and play a triangle, do yeah. something so that I can have played on a Mike Patton track. <laughs> I was begging for it and they had no fucking interest. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, just adding to all the range of stuff he does, uh, he made this insane album uh, called, uh, speaking of hotel rooms, he recorded this album in hotel rooms around the world. When he was on tour, he would just have like a four-track uh, tape recorder and he would just record stuff into it and then slightly remix it with a limited sort of filters and that and he had on it. So it's an album of just his voice, but it's not him singing. It's him making fucking insane noises and looping them and whatever. So it's just just like an hour of just his voice and no instruments at all. It's like a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's called Adult Themes for Voice it, and, it, and it produced hit singles like <laughs> Hurry Up and Kill Me, I'm Cold. <laughs> A, a Definitely woman, felt that oh, way. I relate, <laughs> that. I relate to that too. A hard. woman with the skin of the moon, a lizard with the skin of a woman, <laughs> a leper with the face of a baby girl, and raped on a bed of sand. Oh my god! <laughs> so if you want to give those uh, tunes a whirl at some stage, have you have you listened to this album? I bought I bought this album, and it's insane. Does it can it grow on you at all, or is it just bad? It's a you have to force yourself to listen to it. Right. Like, there's there's so raped on a bed of sand isn't in the jogging playlist. No, <laughs> we it's, go for a run. it's no, it's not. It's not. Um, it's it, look. It's worth a listen just to see what I'm talking about. Yeah. But it's one of those things where even as, as a completist, it wouldn't. I I own it, but it's it doesn't go in the mix at parties. He yeah. sounds like a very frustrating guy to be a big fan of. Where you like, if you love something enough, you know, you you engage with everything they put out. Yes. It seems like he's a he's throwing in a lot of curveballs where it's like, <laughs> oh god damn, can't you make something? That's, and he's also that's prolific good. as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 He's someone where you've got to keep. Collect, especially in the old days of CDs, like I would be, you know, these sort of albums would cost cost fifty bucks and stuff to yeah. be imported as well. And so you're like, oh, I have to get this one as well now. You can't just get it online and whatever. Yeah, um, it sounds like he's trying to lose fans. Yeah, is, that, is he one of those people that like he doesn't want to do something twice? Yeah, so right. yeah, people just go, cool, just do this again. And he's like, all right, what about raped on a bed of sand? <laughs> <laughs> That's his answer to everything. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so he, he he then formed bands such as Tom, Tomahawk, Peeping Tom, Neverman, Mondo Kane, Mondo Kane, uh, which is basically him just singing old Italian pop songs from the '60s in a <laughs> so, full, with a full orchestra. So, so that's not that's his not, most oh. accessible one. Yes, <laughs> totally. I wouldn't I wouldn't watch that. It was for free in Sydney. And so I flew up there and it was an open air gig and it absolutely pissed down. Oh. And I'm just watching this man sing Italian songs in the rain <laughs> with my girlfriend who was like, I wasn't into any of this, particularly the rain. Yeah. <laughs> Is Neverman the, the one that he has with the guy from TV on the radio? Yes. Yeah, right. I've never listened to that. Is that good? Uh, it's okay. Okay. It's one of those things where, like I said, if you stretch yourself that thin and you have a go at everything, you're not going to be good at it. Yeah, okay. I think his forays into hip hop are probably the least successful, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, he also got into film scoring, uh, culminating in him scoring, you know, one of the great movies all, of all time, Jason Statham's High Voltage 2. <laughs> <laughs> the much awaited sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, have you seen that, those movies? No. They're fucking insane. High Voltage? Yes. No. It's Is about. It keeps his heart alive? Is that yes. that one? Yes. He needs to keep getting electrocuted or something (laughs) to keep himself alive. Yeah, right. So it's an action movie where he's trying to, I don't know, do something. And I don't know what it is. Who cares? But he's he's got a quest to do something. But every five minutes he's having to find like – break into a prison and put himself in the electric chair to get recharged <laughs> and then he's off on his mission again. He just has to keep finding more and more inexplicable ways of electrocuting himself. <laughs> that was a big acting challenge for Jason. Um, yeah. yeah. Sort of uh, just mastering the art of looking like you're being electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but am I overdoing the shaking yeah. or should my eyes roll back? Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. One? yeah. What's my, what's my uh, what do you call it? What's my inspiration in What's this? my yeah. motivation? What's my motivation? You're being electrocuted yeah. again. Yeah. 900 yeah. volts. Yeah, yeah but Surely. this is more than like a defib, right? Yeah. So I should probably go more. Yeah. I imagine sure. he's a pretty method kind of guy. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. Just electrocute me. Yeah. I can't act. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Surely if you're that guy, you're just carrying around a fork and just, you know, going for any PowerPoint you find. Great. Yes. It wouldn't be that hard. It wouldn't be that hard at all. Yeah. Why do you have to break into a prison? Yeah. yeah. Go to a yeah. Starbucks. There's a PowerPoint. <laughs> you break, break into a prison with a fork. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> right. Like cafes hate it when people go in like, can I just use a PowerPoint to charge my phone? Yeah, if you yeah. go in, can I A, borrow a fork and yeah. then B, jam it into one of the outlets? <laughs> Uh, so he did that, and then you know that movie, and then you go, "Cool, can you do the music for that?" Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and he says, he, "So he's just a yes kind of guy." Yeah, an opportunity comes along. And he goes, yes, All right. something different. Yeah, yeah. And, which is infuriating, as you said. Like as a fan, you just want him to go back and play with Faith No More. And it's like, no, I want to do the fork in the power socket movie. <laughs> yeah. <God. laughs> Has he ever written a podcast theme song? You could just email him and he'd be oh. like, "All right, better do it." That'd be that's get your friends idea. the avalanches to ask him. <laughs> yeah. how, how did you know I know? <laughs> uh, he also did the theme to uh, Ryan Gosling's movie, The Place Beyond the Pines. So he he did some proper movies as well. Um, Great Faith, movie. Sorry. Great movie. You liked that? Mm-hmm. What do you think of the, about the music? Uh, I don't remember it at all. Huh. Sorry that's, to say. That's wow. how you know it was well scored. Yeah. 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 It didn't, it didn't stick out. Yeah. yeah, good point. That's what people have said about my comedy. Yeah, they go, we don't remember you on the lineup at all. I was like, well, that means it's good. <laughs> if you speak to a lot of audience members, I've never done a gig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Faith No More did reform in 2009 and then toured and then eventually put out a new album called Soul Invictus in 2015. Um, now, like I said, he's done a lot of everything. I put this in because I know you're a fan of this. I don't know about the other th- view three, but uh, because I know you're a big video games fan, Tommy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, in 2007, he provided the voice for the video game The Darkness. Do you know I that? don't know that one. You don't know that one? No. Well, what about this? He also did the voice for this game in 2012, The Darkness 2. <laughs> no, that Have one you I that do one? know. You right, that one? right, right. Right, right. You just never heard of The I'd, Darkness. I'd never heard of Darkness yeah, the darkness. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, right. are they connected in any way? Um, I, 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 I don't have <laughs> the not... three sources here, so I can't confirm anything. You're not a gamer, so you wouldn't no. know. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. you find yourself playing that second game? Going, I don't know how to play this because I didn't play the first one. Yeah, there's no instructions. Right. They just assume that you're going to run straight on. Right. Um, he, so why he did the voice? He did the voice of the, the main voice. In it. Yeah, right. The main oh. voice in that game. Well, I'm disappointed. I thought you knew everything about video games. Yeah, I I do often claim that. <laughs> um, so no music, just he's just a voice actor. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, huh. you surely he's in the recording booth and you're like edging around, going, do you know maybe since you're in here, yeah, yeah get a yeah, track yeah, in there yeah. as yeah. well. He actually, you know what? Another movie he did the voice of. He did uh, the you know uh, the Will Smith movie. I am 
Legend. Mm-hmm. Is that Will Smith? Yes. Yep. He did the voices of all the monsters on really? the movie. Yeah. Wow. It was just him going fucking ballistic, going crazy, <laughs> just taking a few of his good bits from raped on a bed of sand and working <laughs> yeah. that into a I was going to say, it sounds like this spoken, weird sampled spoken word album really paid off for him in the long run. Yeah, It's just yeah. basically a demo reel that he's put out. <laughs> yeah, right. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, no. that it? Matt's got an image yeah, of the darkness. I've never seen that before. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Is that Darkness 1 or Darkness 2, Matt? Yeah. That's the original. Oh, okay. Uh, Right, no, I, I, I don't know. It. Don't know. I don't but know you, you said um, so. He they did reform Faith No More. Yes. But you've also said a few times that he never goes backwards. How did he sort of justify that? Well, good question. So I think the word is money. Um, <laughs> but no, I think what they what they did do was because the other members of the band don't have as much going on. I think what they did was they sort of went not behind his back, but they just jammed and came up with a bunch of stuff, and then came to him and went, "What do you think about this?" And they went, and then Patton was like, oh, well, if it's already done, I guess all I have to do is scream a few times and you can loop that, and then that's an album. So yeah. went, Which is okay. how the first one was made, right? They'd already written yeah. the music. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. That's I've never – because there's a band from Sydney that I really like called You Beauty, and they work in that way where all the um, – everyone except for the singer, they just record all these tracks and they send it to the singer – and then he just does his stuff over the top of it. Right. That's such a bizarre way to work yeah, wow. in a band. Is like, that you a just way? do what you want know. and then I'll just put – I guess it's weird to like work the music out without having any idea of, you know, how the the verses and choruses and stuff are going to fit into it, like vocally. Is that weird? Well, I don't know. It seems, it seems like it's happening more now because of the internet and people are collaborating with people – like yeah. in different parts of the country but also different parts of the world. And also like Elton John – and what's Bernie's name? I was about to say Jess works on Triple J, so she knows about this stuff. And, and then, then I go, go to Elton, Elton John. John. <laughs> <laughs> is he the fe- is the Rocket Man soundtrack the feature album this week? <laughs> did, they, did they unearth him? <laughs> <laughs> He's our unearthed feature artist. Yeah, it's, a, it's a step down. No, but he and what's Bernie? Bernie Torpen. Torpen. Thank you. Yeah. Fuck, I couldn't remember Torpen. They like live on opposite sides of the world and still do that, where Bernie just does all the lyrics and yeah. sends them to Elton. Oh, right. Well, the Strokes, their last couple of albums, I think they've all done remotely. Like yeah. they've all done their parts separately without being in the same room. Hey, whatever together. works. If we could do a podcast and not have to be in the same room. <laughs> we are doing that now. I'm in Thailand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rolling up balls into... No, no. Every, no nothing, nothing, guys. Every room of the ozone. <laughs> <laughs> Just so cover all bases. Uh, but it, it was um, pretty well regarded as a comeback album as yes. well. Yes. Yes, it okay. was uh, – but, no, you're right. He always said I'd, I'd never go back and do Faith No More again. And just I'll beca- never do Darkness 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they. I think um, – They made it easy for him, so it's like why are you going to turn it down? Yeah. yeah. And, and then I, they threw it off the back of it, right? Yes, and yeah. I think also the fact that, you know, you've been away from it for 15 years or whatever it is, it's like all the – whatever negative feelings you had, you know, you sort of mm. grew out of it and whatever and went – I think you've met – with them and went, oh, this is I, – actually, I think one of them got married and they met up at the wedding and went, oh, these guys are okay. Yeah. I think yeah. it's that thing. They they At one stage, you know, they were touring so heavily with someone for that long. Yeah. You guys just did England yeah. and you were touring together for like a two, three weeks or something like that. Yeah. You yeah. need a by break the, after that. Yeah. <laughs> by the end, you were probably waiting for a 15-year break after that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a bit like that. I think they've toured for two years straight at one point. There must so be something beyond like his pride that – Deep down, he, I mean, maybe not everyone, but there must be something fun to him about playing in front of the biggest audiences that you can. And Faith yeah. No More is the only band that he can play stadiums and yes. theatres in front of. Yeah. But, I mean, like, though, he would still play mid range shows, like the shows that we went and saw. Yeah. I think it was more, you know what? I've seen Faith No More play a bunch, and I do get, you do get a little bit of an insight into it by seeing them play the same songs over and over and you I've seen them play probably maybe five or six times and I've like I've been like oh I've heard, probably heard that song enough mm, and it's right. like no, well he's got to sing right. those songs every single right. time um there's no you can't you know with those stadium gigs you can't get away with playing the b-sides and yeah. oh we won't play epic tonight nah mate <laughs> you got to play it every yeah. night yeah. get that fucking goldfish out there <laughs> yeah i was reading an article about the black keys recently cuz they've got a new album coming out and they were the main cuz they just took a pretty significant break before putting out this new album 
uh, like six years or something like that, mm. five yeah, years right. or something. And uh, the the main guy, the guitarist and singer, was talking about that by the end of their last tour, they were so just over it. And he was like, yeah, I'm up there, you know, just on autopilot, mm. just doing the songs, but in my head just thinking about all the errands I have to run the next oh. day. And it's like, I'm, you know, you're not naive. You know that that's probably how it works, but it's like what a shame for you to put that out there, that yeah. that's literally what was going on yeah. and probably will continue to be going on when you're back on tour for this album. Like oh. just so you know, guys, when you're watching me up there, yeah. I am no checked passion. out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care yeah. at all. Yeah. Like, I know you're feeling connected to me, but I am not aware of your presence. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is a huge night for you because we're your favourite band. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't give less of a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like keep some of the mystery, dude. <laughs> well, he just starts listing groceries that he needs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did I say that loud? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Take the kids to the doctor. I mean, this is the best audience we've ever played to. Uh, so now, bring it up to current day, um, where he is now is, so Faith and Will haven't done anything for a few years and I think they haven't disbanded again, but I, there's nothing in the pipeline. Right. It'd be nice to, I'd like to see him play again, but nothing's happening. And, I, and he's certainly not a driving person. So I think the other band would have to do that. Make the whole album again and Trick then him. give it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just ring him for a couple of conversations. Record that, then like sample that, <laughs> yeah. and put it on the album. Um, <laughs> Honestly, that would be incredible. Yes, <laughs> if you wrote backwards and just made it a bit more spoken wordy and like just sort of made it a bit more mellow and then did that, that would be good. And you know mm. what you want the lyrics to be? So you're sort of having to call him up and steer him towards certain <laughs> yeah, yeah, things yeah. in the conversation. <laughs> Who'd you say you love again? <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, so they're just getting to re-record <laughs> that original album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> lyric, lyric by lyric. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, so now at the moment he's um, – He's currently in a hardcore band called Dead Cross where he sings uh, hardcore punk songs with cut-off jeans, which is a great look for a 51-year-old. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. Yes. It's, it's not great. I didn't I didn't know about that. When I saw him, I think maybe one of the last times I saw him was with Pe- Peeping Tom. Yep. And he was, that was a great show, by the so way. So good. I'm yeah. not a massive fan of that album, but I saw that they only played once in Melbourne, so I was at that show as well at yeah. the Forum, which I'd never been to the Forum. Great venue. So yeah, the good, Forum's yeah. awesome. And that show was great. It was great. I thought it was much better than their album. I so you guys it. were at the same show for that? Yes. yes. Whoa, yeah. this is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> I saw him. Yeah, I saw him. And there was this bearded guy in the toilets who was watching me as I was rolling up <laughs> shit into a ball, and I was like, who is this fucking ah, weirdo? Ah, yes. <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> but he was, for some reason, was wearing a hairnet that whole tour. Yes. He thought it, that was his cool look. Yeah. What? He was wearing a suit and a, like a white suit, I think, and a hand. Yeah. <laughs> is like he okay? Like in a deli, sort of. Yeah. 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 He was, People know with, what with really, <laughs> with really, like he was, yeah, like he was working at a fast food shop or yeah. something like that. And he had the grease back hair and the hair net over the top of it. Yeah. And the suit. It was, he was going for a look. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Do I don't it, mind it. Just picturing it in my head mentally. It's, yeah. it's, it's I, didn't think, I thought cool. it wasn't too bad. Yeah. I actually, I, there was worse. It was, when he was really going hip hop, I was like, this is, this <laughs> yes, is not looking good. good. He just must rock up on day one of the tour and the, the band members are like, we can't say anything, but. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. For the last time, we don't have nits. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Hi, Mike. Actually, that reminds me. So he he was working with you know Dan the Automator. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Do you guys know that guy, music producer? Yeah, Dan producer. The Automator? Yeah. Um, he did some stuff with him, and then he formed a band, another band, with him, and they called themselves Crudo. And they did a few warm up gigs, and they recorded a couple of tracks that you can find online. But I think they must have had a fight. No, any, anyway, nothing actually happened. They didn't record an album. They didn't do proper shows. I think they did like one or two really small warm-up shows. Anyway, they obviously were aiming for that to be a bigger thing because Dan the Automator was quite well-known, Patton's quite well-known. Anyway, I don't know how this happened, but in a mo- there's a movie out there. There's quite a decent-sized movie where I think they sort of foreshadowed them being big and they name-checked this band, Crudo, and they play a bit of it. And, they, and like one of the characters is like, Oh, my favourite band's Crudo. Oh, let's pop some on. And then you could hear a little bit. It's like, they never came out. Wow. They were never a band. <laughs> that nice. sort of makes it better. Yeah. Yeah. It's very weird. It anyway. seems like a, a fictional band that the, the filmmakers went into a bit of effort to yeah, make yeah, something yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. okay. They're like yeah. the modern Josie and the Pussycats. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, right, so that's where he has, is at the moment. He's with Dead Cross. I'm pining for him to go back to Faith No More. Um 
Now, like his legacy, I guess, is that, uh, you know, it's nice. I don't know if you guys get this when you have an artist that you really like and you sort of barrack for them mm. and, you you know, you look up and if they win an award or something, you're like, yeah, great, because he's my man. You know, mm-hmm. he's the he's the guy I'm really, you know, into and I barrack for. He's like a, like a football team sort of thing. That's how I do it, I guess. Yeah. Which is- Especially if you've been into something for like a very long time yes. was it started out and then they get to the point where they're being nominated for and winning Grammys. Yes. Is, is pretty like exciting. Not yeah. that the Grammys necessarily mean anything, but it is like exciting. Yes. Yeah. Some sort of no, uh, yeah. not notification, but some sort of notoriety. Like notoriety. when yeah, uh, sure. Human Nature got the residency in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was yeah. like, yeah, boys. Yeah. Yeah. We, did <laughs> we did it. We did it. We felt a part of that. Yeah. 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 I, I teared up when I drove down the strip in Vegas and saw the big billboards for the Thunder Down Under. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, just some hometown heroes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, talking of Hey It's Saturday, that's very weird when you go to Vegas and you look around at all the billboards and most of the acts there are from, have been on Hey Hey It's Saturday. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. that's, it's like the Hey Hey It's Saturday retirement home is Vegas because yeah. there's like Rita Rudner and the amazing Jonathan yeah. and all these weird American right. acts that have gone to Vegas. The anyway. leggy Rhonda Birchmore? No, <laughs> I think I think it's a Rhonda Birchmore impersonator over there. Right. Yeah. Get Aussie up there. Get Aussie doing a show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> at, so, like I said at the start of the show, I was I was sort of saving that to the end, but you know he's been named the greatest singer of all time. So you read that sort of thing and you go, oh wow, he's got the most octaves. That's cool. You're barracking for him. Oh wow, people you know really regard him as highly. Um, however, <laughs> this is this is the thing. Like if I'm explaining Pat to someone like that, that that's the thing I would I would lead into. But you can't do it with like influence. You know, you've got to you know say David Bowie. Mm. If you're a big David Bowie fan, you can go, oh, his influence is everywhere. He's influenced yeah. this person and this, this sort of music. With Patton. What you can literally say about Patton's legacy or his influences on other bands and singers are people like Huber Stank, Papa Roach, <laughs> Corn, and Incubus. They're the people that go, yeah. we couldn't have done this without Mike Patton. <laughs> right. And, and Patton's yeah. like, fuck, I've wasted my life. <laughs> he pretty he kind of invented new metal, right? Sort of, yeah. Or he inspired people to invent it. Yeah, yeah. I, pretty he was, brutal. He was a gateway drug to new metal. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So there's an argument to be made that he's one of the worst artists of the modern era. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you had a time machine yes. and you could go back and kill <laughs> baby he's, Mike Patton. He's the musical Hitler. You're right. <laughs> yeah. He was the one. He didn't kill anyone, but he inspired people to kill yeah. music. <laughs> yeah. right. yes. He's Hitler's dad. Yes. Yeah, wow. What's your favourite of his non-Faith No More projects? Uh, tough question. I love... The album Disco Volante from Mr. Bungle. Okay. And I love most of, right at the very top of that mount would be probably a couple of uh, Phantomous albums. Phantomous? Okay. Yes. yes. Absolutely. What do you think, Matt? Uh, Yeah, like Director's Cut, you're thinking? Uh, No, I don't like that as much. I like the crazy shit. Right. Because they're straight covers. Disco Volante is the... That's the crazy bungle. That's the crazy bungle. Yeah. So I, I like California probably. A lot of people like California because it's is a bit more straight smooth. poppy. Apparently when they went to record it, they told their label, we're going to do a bungle album only pop. And right. the record label is like licking their lips. This yeah. is going to be huge. <laughs> and then they handed it in and they're like, what the f-? Yeah. No one's. Yeah. But I mean, it, it is That's way the, more It's Brian listenable. Wilson on meth. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, <laughs> it's not an actual pop it's album. A, it's, a no, it's nice to listen to. Um, Compared to their others, it's it's I, smooth going. I think Tom Tomahawk has a lot of um, just sort of great rock songs. It's sort of much yes. more, again, Very easier. straight ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not – that's. I mean, most of the bands are he, – he wasn't driving that band at all. That was the Jesus was a guy, right? Brian Dennison, yes. Um, I think he was just adding lyrics, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. I think Faith the More is probably still my favorite of them. And then yeah, the I even though you shat on the uh, Mike Patton stuff, shat on the Mister Bungle album, <laughs> the original. I really like that album yeah. still. That might I, be that's not one I listen to very much. I feel it's a bit teenage boy. Well, that's, me. maybe that's who I am. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, I'm not judging. I can't see how old you are under that beard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> um, but yeah, you've. Um, there was a track he did with um, Elaine. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Bennis. Ben- Ella- <laughs> 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 Fuck. <Yeah. laughs> I was going to down to down 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 because that wasn't him. No, the, uh, Johan- Elaine Ben. Johannes Johannes from used to be in uh, Queens of the Stone Age and other bands. Oh yes, I love that gra- song. Yeah, me too. That was one of my favourite songs from last year. So but I, I couldn't really figure out what. Patton was he was sort of that. singing he was singing underneath and really? a little bit in the right you I can love hear that song it, yeah it's, yeah <laughs> it's it's a sweet mix of sort of that quatzer sound and yes a little there is 
There's pattern in there. Maybe that's what I like about it. Yeah. It's, he's not influencing it too. I think when he has free reign. I completely agree with what, you, what you're about to say. When he has free range, I'm not that into it. It gets, it's it's like he's it's testing too much. you. He's going, go on, listen to this. Well, I th- yeah, I think he's not good enough. <laughs> right. Like to be like just him all the time. I think he's an excellent collaborator. Needs people to rein him in. Yes, yeah. I completely agree. Because he's got the six octaves. Yes. He's a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> But, he needs, but, but like it, all without, weapon, you yeah. need, you're only dangerous in the right hand lock. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Is that, is that a thing? I, I just tried to sound like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. right hand lock. Chandler Pretty the hand lock. Yeah. <laughs> tried to th- th- sound like I knew what I was talking about, about killing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you let yourself down, I'm afraid. No. I, but you've inspired me to go back, and I, I haven't really been deep into him uh, for a while, so I'm going to go back and... Deep dive, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, depends what you like. But that Dead Cross I've, album, it's not, not too bad. I don't mind it. And I again, and that that's all. a good that's a good example of him not being a hundred percent responsible for the music. Right. So it's good. I don't think I ever really gave Disco Volante a chance. Matt, which I know is my Patton fans listening will be like, what a, what I a pretender. L- I lis- I reckon I listen to it every day for about three years. No and shit. it's it's batshit crazy, but I love it. And it changed the way I listen to music. Because I came off the back of that first album and just was like, oh, yeah, clowns and pornography and whatever. This is funny and cool. And then I wasn't 17 anymore. And okay. Then all I'll right. Look-, look, that's feeling a little personal. <laughs> so, um, but it's so out there that it actually made me want to listen to different stuff. Yeah. It, it, I went, oh, it's, you know, it's not just all pop music out there. You can go and listen to whatever you want. And all this weird, weird stuff is still music if you allow it to be music mm. yeah um so yeah it really um uh, uh I, I find myself attracted to people that are uh genre hopping and a lot of different stuff like my two the two artists i've always listened to for you know my whole life is him and elvis costello who does a lot of lot of different stuff as well yeah. so i think i get a bit bored with someone if they just do the, do the same thing sort of all the time because there are but there's two ways you can go with those bands that have longevity you either have to keep morphing like Bowie or Patton or someone, yeah. or the bands that go, we've figured out our sound, we're going to do a basically the same thing album after album, like ACDC or something. Yes. We're sort of just reinventing the wheel every time. Yeah. Wait, that's not what that means, is it? They're doing the same thing. Yeah. They're not reinventing They're slightly the wheel. modifying the wheel. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jack They're putting White's... new spokes on the, in the wheel each time. Jack yeah. White's kind of a good example where he has like a bunch of different side things that all sort of sound relatively the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I do, I mean, I'll, I do like him, but I guess, yeah, you only get bored if you really listen to too much of it. I yeah, guess. yeah, for yeah. sure. The well, Black I, Keys are a band, I think, that are pretty, I mean, they've changed a little bit, but they've kind of. They've made their sound bigger, but they've done pretty much the same thing for a long yeah. time, yeah. Hmm. Right. Well, go back, Disco Volante. I do listen to it every day. Like, I forced the lab that I worked in, in the Ballarat Uni, to listen to every day of fucking uni there for a year, I think. I just <laughs> com- I commandeered the, the music system in there and just played that and that... everyone was like, fuck this album. That does feel, yeah, like you would have been unpopular. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think... A real misfit. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they got very sick. I think I was... I think I was in a lab where everyone else was a year below me and I was like, well, I'm the oldest. I'm fucking playing these, <laughs> these albums. And like, fuck, I can't wait for next year. <laughs> like, can't argue with that. Yeah. yeah. A bungle done? Have they? What was the last thing they Very did done. together? Yeah. There's one of the members lives in Melbourne, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Bear McKinnon. Yes, you're right. Come I on. had him on my community radio show about 10 years ago. Great. And we I did a, a, a special on Mike Patton's music. Yep. And he was, yeah, he was just sitting in talking it through. Yeah. I, I think I had it on a CD somewhere. I hardly remember what it was about, but it's so Weird That's that he wild. lives here for some reason. He was so I I met. He did a solo show. He moved here and he did a solo show. And I was talking to him, got to know him a tiny bit, and then I saw him at one of those shows, like when Patton came out to do Phantomus or something like that. And I saw him and went, "Hey, Bear, how are you going? And, he, and how's is, is Bungle going to get back together? What's going to happen there?" And he goes, "I'm about to go and ask him that actually." And he <laughs> went backstage, and then I saw him. I'm like, well, "How'd you go?" And he's like, "No good." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> That solo Crazy. album he did was really good. Was it about ten years ago? Yes, it was I called. Reckon... Uh, I know the one. Yes. Yeah. 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 I... It was. It was okay. It had Patton on it. Right. Yeah. On it did song. one track, and it was in that same sort of world. But yes. yeah, real fun album. Yes. Anyway, we're trailing off now. Yeah. Yeah. How does this, this is usually... turned into the AV club? Yeah. <laughs> How does this usually end? I feel like I already used my Tadar moments. No, that was great. With... That was a really good, really good report. Okay. Oh, good. Good. I really yeah, wanted to awesome. say. I hope you didn't buy a house. 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it actually looks really good. <laughs> 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 Fuck, you've been sitting on that callback yeah. for a while. <laughs> I saw Dave yeah. clock it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. Sometimes you just know how it's going to end. He's got it written on a big cue card in yeah. front of him. And why is he bringing out that hairdryer now? How, <laughs> how's this show going to finish? What are you doing, Dave? The big finale. Oh, how are we going to do our um, Patreon stuff? Or do that, that separately later? Yeah, yeah, just sweet. get through it? All right. That sounds good. So we can Probably. get through it. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we can not make you guys hang around forever. But we should, maybe we should thank him for coming in then. Yeah, absolutely. And then say we'll go. We'll say, yeah. yeah. Honestly, though, that was a, a lot of fun. Thank you Great. very much for hey. bringing that in. And we could feel, and I'm glad I chose, told you to pick something that you've got passion for because I could feel the passion in the oh, good. in it for you. Yeah. The listener, yeah. That's one thing the listener's biggest feedback we ever get is when they can hear passion in a topic we do. They love those episodes the most, I reckon. Okay. We can't do them anymore because I talked about something I really loved and Dave shat all over Oh, me. really? Uh, we talked about me. river dance for an hour. <laughs> and wow. also, do you have anything up your sleeve that you like anymore? Surely you've already used all the stuff you like. I still haven't done an episode on the Saints. I'm holding that oh, back. Yeah. Hang on, the Saint killed a football club or the band the Saints? <laughs> the Saint killed a football club. Right. Because you do look like you would be into the Saints. I, I like the Saints. Right. Maybe you can just work up to it. Do the band the Saints. I'll do right. yeah. Saints. Self ready for the Saints. And, and, yeah, and put a few little St Kilda like, bits of trivia in there. Yeah, yeah easy right. way. And yeah. see what the audience think and go, we like that, but we didn't like the band bit. We like yeah. the, yeah. the football bit. Just dip my toe in. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow, well, really, really, that's good. You're getting a bit of heat for this St Kilda episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get online. If you want it, I yeah. mean. <laughs> I'm going to get online and start ask, doing a petition for it. Yeah. In right. Koh Samui. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yep. What, now, do you, oh, sorry, one more question and then, then I'm done. <laughs> do you know what you're going to talk about in Koh Samui? Not yet. No. no we, we thought we'd get your advice about it. I think we're going to do mini reports, like an umbrella topic. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And then do... Um, yeah. In individual reports, but maybe you could help us out with that. Oh, I was yeah, sure. Uh, I would. I was hoping that you do something about Kosamui because I would like to know more about the mm. place I go every six months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. We could do a Thailand <laughs> special, maybe. Yeah, surely yeah. there's an information center we could go to. <laughs> <laughs> Start reading out pamphlets. Just, yeah, just, just reading brochures. Yeah, oh. at the airport. Just while you're waiting for the taxi, you just. <laughs> Cleaning out the, the container <laughs> yeah, of yeah. pamphlets. So, did you know you can swim with dolphins here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, did you know that you could go and get a hamburger at Hooters? <laughs> <laughs> Tricking a tour guide into coming and doing the report on your <laughs> podcast would <laughs> be pretty great. <laughs> Please tell me more. I'm going to splurge on a lonely planet and absolutely wipe the floor oh. with you dumb shit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, yeah, no, we're, we're really, really excited about it. I yeah. guess this... This time next week ish after when after this episode comes out, we'll all be over there. Yeah. 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 And you guys are about to do an episode of our show too. Yeah, so that's people right. can listen to that if if mm. you don't listen to us already and you enjoyed this. Yeah, so maybe just in case people aren't aware of the little dum dum club, tell us a bit about the show. I know you've recently celebrated your four hundred and fiftieth episode. Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't know about <laughs> celebrating, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so you've you've been uh, podcasting. Oh, we've got to do another report now. Well, on yeah, our yeah. Show. <laughs> we'd be we'd be celebrating having something better to do. But we did the 450th episode. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, we just, you know, it's, it's look, you guys are lucky in a way in that you've got something to talk about every week. You have a specific focus, whereas we just have to try and think of the dumb things that happen every week and hopefully walk into traffic and something happens so we've yeah. got something to talk about on the episode. Yeah. The, um, was the original pretense was that it was sort of like the, com- the backstage at a comedy club? So I, I think we started our podcast thinking – we were laughing a lot more, having more fun backstage than we were on stage, which <laughs> is, you know, a review of our on scra- on stage limitations, <laughs> maybe. But, um, but yeah, we were, it's just like you know when you sit around with comics. I mean, you have a lot more fun off mic than you probably have on mic on th- on this thing yeah. as well. Um, so it was basically just just that, um, which then turned into fucking four hundred and fifty. And you basically Insane. have all the biggest comedians in Australia and international. Whoever will say yes, yep. Uh, yeah. But we do do try and have like if someone comes out and uh, uh, we've had a few good names, haven't we? Yeah, we've, we've had heaps of good names. Yeah. Bill Burr, we've had Mark we just Maron. Had, we we just had Russell Howard. He came and did a yep. show of ours in England. Yep. Um, who else? Who else has been? Anywhere? Tim and Eric have been on once. Oh yeah, they were too. Yeah. Yeah. We've had some really good uh, people. Hannibal Buress. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. And and they they're all the international people. I think we're, we're trying to think of because. Uh, Australian people are a lot easier to get a hold of, I guess. But internationally, who was there? 
in Americans, we've had – who else in America did we get? Paul F. Tompkins, oh, people yeah. might know, has yes. been on a bunch. Scott Orkman Scott Orkman from Orkman. Comedy Bang Bang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it's fun. It's a good good way of um, mm-hmm. meeting people overseas, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, go and look it up. There's like 450, littledumdumclub.com. Yeah, and so we're, we're, we're about to, for, for people to uh, see a bit of behind the curtain. We're about to turn these mics off for one second and then restart our podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> record that. And, and uh, I hope you guys have got your reports ready. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> History of hair dryers. <laughs> <laughs> We're firing up. But yeah, awesome. So check out the Little Dum Dum Club. And if you are so inclined, come and meet all five of us in Ghost <laughs> Week this time next yeah. week. Just come on down, baby. Just come break Do up it. with your shitty partner. Yes. Quit your dumb job. Yep. Let's go to Kosamui. Or, you know, take a week off your job <laughs> and tell your partner and, that you'll be back soon. Or <laughs> take some, a well earned annual leave and bring your partner. Oh, dear. I've already quit my job. Oh, Dave. <laughs> I did not think about this. <laughs> I forgot that I had annual leave. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, I forgot it. to tell you there was other options. I, mean, yeah. I feel this is my fault, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, we'll say goodbye to Tommy and Carl now and we'll uh, kick on through our Patreon section in one moment. But thank you, Tommy and Carl. Thanks oh, so much. Bye. Uh, see ya. Thank you. <laughs> We've uh, now lost the dead weight. The dead weight of... Well, Tommy, Carl, and also Jess is That's gone right. as well. I should say probably the talent, the, yeah. the three-fifths. The uh, dead talent. weight could not leave the room, and it's Matt and I on the microphones for the Patreon segment at the end of the show. But I reckon that was a lot of fun, that episode. That was so much fun. I had a great amount of time. And I do. I love Mike Patton, and I look forward to – there were bands and a few different outfits. You didn't even talk about it. shows you how many um, different projects he's had over it's the actually- years. Crazy a lot because I thought I'd heard of a few of them, but then there were ones that I was I had no idea he did any hip hop. Yeah, right. And wow. there's others that I um I I've meant to get into, and I'm looking forward to going home and listening to now as well. Yes. Um, so it sounds like it's just like a, a multiple month deep dive. Yeah, to totally. Get to it. Uh, but yeah, it's now time for everyone's favorite section of the show, uh, which is the fact quote or. Question. Yes. Now, the way this works is if people want to support the show, they can do so at any time by going to patreon.com slash do go on pod. And in exchange, you get a bunch of rewards, including two bonus episodes every month that no one else hears. We just released one just last week at the the last day of May, which was our pranks special. Oh, we just did so a mini good. report on a prank from history. The story I told was pretty wild. As it was well. absolutely wild. Your one. I think they were all. Obviously pretty funny for being pranks, but your one was especially, wow, it was fascinating. So if you want to hear episodes like that, there's a bunch of other uh, bonus episodes still up online at patreon.com slash do go on pod. And another segment of the show brought to you by Patreon is uh, the fact quota question. That's right. Uh, And this week's fact quota question comes from Patreon Craig Mowat, M-O-W-A-T. Oh, Mowat. Mowat. Moe, oh, um, Moe, Cra- and if he's from America, Craig. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. Craig or Craig? Craig Moe, uh, or Craig Mowat? Oh, if you, Craig, if you're an Aussie. Craig Moe. Uh, and <laughs> both. It, the title he's given himself because you had to give yourself your own title as well. Is Aussie podcast aficionado? As all of my favourite pl- uh, podcasts are from Planet Broadcasting. Is cool. Oh, fantastic. Very, very nice. Thank you so much, Craig. That makes me think Craig. that he is a Craig, probably, because if you were Aussie, you wouldn't say all oh, my po- favourite podcasts are Australian. That's true. You? Probably. I anyway. mean, he, he could be from the United Kingdom. Yeah. He could be from, uh, you know, Japan. Or <laughs> oh, I've heard of Sweden. it. Sweden. I mean, I could look it up, but I, I wouldn't want to get invasive, Craig. You know, you've, you your privacy is your privacy, so I'm going to leave right. your identity to be your own identity. Um, <laughs> even though in the next section of the Patreon thing, we always read out the places. Still, Craig and Craig have given us a fact this week. And this fact is... the Love a fact, Craig. Love a fact, Craig. Uh, the, this week's fact is the proper term for a group of rhinos is a crash. I think, ah. I think a crash of rhinos seems pretty appropriate. Pretty apt. Yeah. Big time. You've nailed that. Uh, Aussie th- podcast aficionado, and Craig Mowat. Sadly, with less and less rhinos on the planet, there's less and less crashes on this planet. Yeah. That's a bit sad, isn't it? A little less crash, boom, bang. 
Little, little ass boom crash opera. Oh, now you're talking my language. Oh, onion skin. That's, a, that's an Australian band from the 80s. Anyway, um, thank you so much, Craig, you bloody legend. So you can you can be like Craig and get into our fact quote or question segment if you go and support us on Patreon. And it's the uh, Sydney Scheinberg Deluxe Rest in Peace level. That's right. Rest in peace, Sydney. So every time we read out a fact quote or question, it is in the memory of the great man, Sydney Scheinberg. I should also say that as well as do go on, when you're supporting us, our mini podcast network on uh, Patreon, you're also supporting shows like Dave's uh, Book Cheat podcast. This week's episode of Book Cheat, what was it about, Dave? Oh, that's right. It just came out yesterday and I had uh, special guests from the Ooh Spooky podcast, uh, Adam Knox and Luca Muller, and we talked about a commonly requested dystopian novel, Brave New World. Great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that. Yeah, get stuck in. Uh, and this week's Primates episode, uh, this blows my mind to tell you, but it was about the band The Monkees, and uh, my guest was singer from Tism and many other bands, including Damien Cow's Disco Machine, Damien Cow. That is so, so cool. What was it like sitting there going toe-to-toe? He was sitting right there. It still blows my mind. And he was so lovely. We chatted um, before and after the podcast as well. Just the loveliest. You know, they say don't meet your heroes. Well, he blew that all out of the water because it was such a, a lovely a delight? time. A delight, I'd you say. Put that, a delight. Put it down. I'm not call it a delight. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And the monkeys had a wild story. They were a... Um, I didn't use this term in the episode, but they are known as, or they were became known as the prefab four because they were sort of like the prefabricated oh. fab four, which is a beautiful. Damn, that is good. What a put, what a put down. Yeah, um, I, I regret not bringing it up in the episode. Uh, but Did anyway. you talk about how on the Simpsons, Marge was bullied for their lunchbox. Oh no! Do you remember that? There's a flashback to her childhood, and uh, she's. Um, going through therapy and she gets on with the monkey's lunchbox and someone says, onto the bus this is, and the, someone says, you know that they don't even play their, write their own songs? And she just starts screaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, good stuff. But we, we learned in the episode that they did go on to write some of their own songs. So good anyway, stuff. a bit of sizzle there. Yeah, okay, all right. Episode 50 of Primates. Congratulations, sir. Thank you so much. Is that 50 in a row? You haven't missed one either. I haven't have missed one in, yeah, 50 in a row. I'm on a hot streak. Yeah, hell yeah, keep it going. That's amazing. Uh, and oh, is this? A t- I could ask you probably off air, but I've been watching Catch Twenty Two on Stan. Oh which yeah, is a, H- a Hulu program. Any chance you could do a Catch Twenty Two one day? Yes, I bought a copy of it because it's so commonly requested, and I'd like to read it before. If I did watch the show, I wouldn't want to watch that first. I'd, you know, do the book first. So maybe it's coming up. Hopefully, great. But a bit of Thailand Get me reading. On. Yeah, you want to talk about it? Okay, I would love yeah. to be on right, Put you on that one for sure. Because I, I have enjoyed the series, um, but I have heard from one of our patrons, Brian Colella. Oh, hello, Brian. On his Twitter, he said that um, it it's not as good as the book. Oh, okay, sure. And Often I lo- the way. I love I love people talking like that. It really Because <laughs> I'm like, because I think it's really good. So I imagine how good the book how good is. How good the book is, yeah. Anyhow, now what we like to do is thank a few of our Patreon supporters. Um and uh, the way we like to do it normally is uh, Jess will give us a little game to play. But today uh, we thought because we were talking earlier in the episode about anagrams and to how Dave, <laughs> yeah. we've never noticed before, but Dave's uh, name is hiding the word wank. Yeah, and wanker. And wanker. Yeah. And wanked. <laughs> I've, got, I've never thought about wanked. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, so... Dave's uh, pulled open a uh, some sort of anagram making website, and we're going to anagramize everyone's name. So I'm going to thank him, and then Dave's going to give you some options. Or yeah, give me some options. So we've got. Uh, I'm on uh, new.wordsmith.org over here. Oh, that's your home page, probably. Yeah, of course. Uh, firstly, I'd love to thank, and I love this um, place uh, name at least. I'm not, I'm not sure if I've ever been there, but from Mullumbimby in New South Wales, Australia. Love that. I'd love to thank Abby Garland. Abby Garland. So, Abby, you on uh, wordsmith.org, you have 4,177 possible options, and Ooh. number one is probably my favourite here. Okay. You've gone through them all? <laughs> yep. <laughs> beanbag Lardy. Oh, that's great. You've, you're a classic beanbag. Beanbag Lardy. Or a gabble Randy. Yeah. Well, that describes me right now. A- What's the first word? Gabble. Gabble. 
Or a dabble angry. Oh, yeah, that's me as well. Banal gab dire. <laughs> Stop describing me. <laughs> Such invasive ways. Hopefully one of those will stick with you, Abby, for your high school band. Wow, there's 4,000 options here. It's amazing. Many of them are blab. Blab day range. Yeah, so a lot of them are gibberish. Yeah, yeah. But Beanbag Lardy, that's the top one. That's amazing. Beanbag Lardy, I love that. Thank you so much, Abby. You're legend. Uh, and thank you so much for your support. I'd also love to thank from Bristow in VA, which is probably Virginia, Dave. And do we ask this question regularly? It feels yeah. like there's a question that comes up a bit. We must have a few Virginians or whatever VA is. I mean, it's got to be. Yes, it is. Uh, so from Bristow, Virginia, I'd love to thank Stephen Jones. Stephen Jones. Now, Jonesy. you have the honour, Stephen, of having the word peen in your name. Oh, great. Keen for. Keen for. I, my favourite of which is peen sent Josh. Oh, peen sent Josh. Yep. I mean, that's that's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Peen sent Josh. So, that means that Josh sent peen would also <laughs> yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, yes, actually. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Josh sent peen. Well, that Josh. We've got to go with that. And um, honestly, I think that is... Best one we're going to get here. We've also got um, Sheen Pent Jots, but that doesn't mean much, does it? No, it means less. Pen Jots might mean something. But yeah, I think, um, uh, what was it? Josh Sent Peen. Josh Sent Peen. The winner, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephen Jones, your ledge. Uh, from Eastern Heights in Queensland, Australia. Uh, and I would like to go on the record and say, I still love you, Queensland. Uh, Kate <laughs> Mallory. Kate Mallory, your anagram here that I've chosen is Alarm Elk Troy. Alarm Elk Troy. I like that a lot. Or the number one option out I think, of the... I think Elk Alarm is better. Elk Alarm Troy? Elk Alarm. I like the idea of, of, of living in an area where you need an alarm set up in case of elk. Yes, that's true. Possibly. And I named that alarm Troy. That's my elk alarm, Troy. <laughs> I'd love to introduce. It's a man. My oh. my elk alarm is a man named yeah. Troy. He yells out, "Elk! Elk! <laughs> there's an elk! Troy, get out of bed! There's an elk here! Troy, Come and have a look!" A, Troy, is this a false alarm again? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, look, it's an elk. The man who yelled elk. <laughs> um, there's the top three here though that come up for Kate Mallory of the one thousand options. Malarkey lot. Oh, I love malarkey as oh. a word. I remember it. My um, the, her, one of the first times I heard it or it really pricked up my ears was watching Buffy way back in the day when Buffy was on TV, obviously. And uh, who was – what was his name? It was the dad from Problem Child and he was also the dad in Eight Things About Your Daughter or something, How to Date Your Daughter or something. And he was in Buffy. Yeah, he was, in, he was the bad guy on one episode of Buffy. Turned out he was a robot, but he was like a real old school guy and he was dating Buffy's mum. Oh, and he started saying, "I am. I remember remember it that he said this a lot." But he said, "I won't stand for this malarkey." Great line. Yeah, great line. What was that guy's name? Malarkey lot. I've also just got uh, Koala Myrtle, Koala, and uh, Karate Molly. Oh, that's a good nickname, Karate Molly. Oh, that they're really good. Yeah, strong ones. You're gonna know this guy when I tell you his name, John Ritter. Okay, maybe not. John Ritter doesn't oh, sorry. mean yes, anything yes, to you. Sorry, yes, yes, no. I'm just. I've got the wrong uh, tab open here. You've got the John Ritter tab open. Uh, Kate Mallory is Mallory the name of Michael Mallory, the man who wouldn't die. Was it Michael Mallory? Oh, uh, Malloy. Oh, I'm way off there. No, that's close enough. Okay, great. <laughs> You're always there to pick me back up. I give that to you. You can have it. Uh, thank you so much, Kate. Oh, okay. I still like it. <laughs> Elk Alarm Troy. Yeah. <laughs> I'd also uh, love to thank from Ben Fleet in Essex, Great Britain, Daniel Smith. Oh, we've got 10,000 options for Daniel right, Smith. Daniel Smith, all right. I'll just give you the first 500 here. Thank you so much. Okay. Hand elitism. <laughs> Hand elitism. That's you. you got great hands. That's good stuff. Thank you so much. Or hailed mints. As in your hailing mints. I think that they're both really good. I'm pretty sure if I'm if this is the right Dan Smith, I'm pretty sure we met Dan Smith when we were in the UK. Aha. Uh-huh. Had a great mustache. Love a good mo. Came to know. my stand up show and then he also came to one of our podcasts. If I'm remembering you right, 
But, I mean, there's probably other Daniel Smiths. There is another. So, apologies. And one final anagram for Daniel Smith. We love a dame here. Oh, yeah. There's Have you ever heard dame. of Dame Shit Nil? <laughs> no, I haven't. Oh. Dame Shit Nil. Dame Nil Shit. Dame. Ooh, my lady. <laughs> oh, my lady. Oh, my dame. That's pretty good. Dame Shit Nil. That means no shit. Nil shit. No shit. Dame no shit. <laughs> she doesn't fuck around. If you want the truth, go to Dame Nil shit. Thank you so much, Daniel Smith. I'd also love to thank from Evesham in Great Britain. Remembering that I know that you pronounce words differently in Great Britain, so it's probably not Evesham. It's probably Evem or something. You probably aren't meant to pronounce half the letters. But anyway, <laughs> it's spelt Evesham. Or Eversham. Eversham. Matthew Millwood. Oh, Matthew Millwood. Only 5,000 options for you, M-M. I'm afraid. But uh, of the 5,000 I've picked out, whammed, wart, lit. Oh, yeah. You got to wham that wart lit. You got to wham it. You got to wart it. That shit is lit. We've also got a dame here. Dame Warmth Wilt. <laughs> <laughs> Please, say hello. Say hello to my little friend, Dame Warm Wilt. Thank you so much, Matthew. Obviously, a, Thank a beautiful you. name, Matthew, in itself. It's spelled with two name. T's the correct way. Yes, the one and only way. Like it was spelled in the Bible. Let's not get too efficient with those T's. Obviously, you need two <laughs> T's if you're spelling Matthew correctly. Matthew. Matthew. Well, it's not Matthew. It's not Matthew. What are we doing? What is this, Come amateur on. hour? Get another T or get out of here. <laughs> yeah, filthy animal. Thank you so much, Matthew. Yeah, Probably you non filthy animal. And then finally, Dave, did you get a surname for this one? No, there are no. There's no surname for this one, so it is. Oh, this is going to be. A... There's limited options for the anagram generator. Well, from Bal Griffin in Dublin, uh, I could just say Dublin. From Dublin in Ireland, it's Craig. <laughs> Craig, the one. It's it's like Adele. It's like Beyonce. It's Craig. Craig. How we many Craigs could there be How in many... Dublin? <laughs> Well, the anagram uh, solver here, I'm afraid, has only given us two options. I'm going to give them both to you. Okay. Craig I. Craig I. Craig I is in uh, C R A G and then second word I. Okay. And the other one is cigar. Wow. <laughs> that has blown my mind. <laughs> Craig is an anagram of cigar. I didn't know that. Holy shit. I reckon Craig probably did. Yeah. But that's, Craig, I'm sorry. You gave us one option. Do you think that? There's a possibility that that Craig is the same Craig as our fact Craig. Holy shit, it's possible. Could you? Could it be? I mean, it could be. Could it? Could it be? I believe it could be. Um, thank you so much, Craig. Thank you so much. Or all Craig. the Craig. All Craig. All the Craig. All the cigars. All the Craig guys. And thanks to everyone that supports the show on Patreon. Man, it makes a difference to us, doesn't it? Oh, it's so much. Um, it, it's... Um, yeah, it means everything. So I appreciate it so much. The Patreon supporters are my favourite people in the world. Um, others who want to support the show are unable to do it on the Patreon. Things you can do is suggest the show to your friends. Maybe there's an episode you think a, a friend of yours might like in particular. Um, I think maybe you need to tell them to skip past the babble at the start. That's up to you. Tell them when the yeah, report Yeah, they're going to like us before they like the babble, I think. <laughs> right? I think that is definitely a thing people, you see people comment sometimes like, shut up and get to the point. Yeah, sorry about that. Wait, wait which is it? Shut up or get to the point? <laughs> I can't do both. Um, but we don't take that personally, okay? Well, Honestly, I, I feel the same way sometimes listening to podcasts. So No, no, that's when we think, oh, God. Oh, God, what have we done? Um, but uh, I know also a lot of people love the babble. So thank you. And uh, they're the people who are still listening now. Yeah, no. If you don't like the bubble, babble, you are probably not listening to the, this far in. Um, but if you want to get onto us in in uh, other ways, other, other than just listening, which is not in, in so many ways, is not. I'm a bit sick and I'm waning. Okay, well, let me take over and just say all the details for all our contact stuff. Great. Our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, our email, our Patreon. Buy merchandise, suggest a topic. Anyone can do that at any time by going to our website, dogoonpod.com. Yes. Check it all out. There's the links there. And the YouTube is youtube.com slash dogoonpod. Everything's dogoonpod. And then yeah. uh, the other podcasts, there are links to Primates and Book Cheat in the description here as well. Yeah, check them out. Keep them going as well. 50 and episodes young. If Beautiful. you 
if you do, if you're thinking about it, come to Thailand next week or I this mean, week. So much fun. We're we're almost getting ready to pack. Yeah. Um, but if if not, you will be able to listen. And I'm sure we'll be doing updates, especially on the Patreon, but for on the social media. Yeah, you well. may. Well, um, that's a big reason, I reckon, to follow our social media. We'll be posting stuff every day from Thailand, from in and around the festival. I'm going to be bringing our little 4K camera. And yeah, um, hopefully we'll have some sort of a video. Some little videos that will. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a reason to follow our stuff on there. Because we know there's definitely more people that listen than follow us on those stuff. So if you're not already on our Instagram, why not check it out? Yes, do it. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us again here at Do Go On. And as we always say, <laughs> what does Jess say again? Banana. She says banana. banana. That's how she says goodbye. All right. <laughs> I thought you meant her go-to word. She says bye. Okay. You want to do Jess? I'll do me and you do Dave. Okay. Uh, and I'll say goodbye. Laters. Bye. Oh, that smelled it. Bananas. Thank you. Banana. <laughs>